Mike Sills. And welcome aboard. We know you have so many options out there. And we appreciate you coming here each and every single day. Um, It's been an amazing couple of days here with the NFL and with the Eagles, especially in free agency. You know, isn't it funny? The NFL knows exactly how to dominate the front page of the sports page. Every other story, when it comes NBA or you start talking baseball or anything else, it's, it's a second to third story. The Sixers, the, the Phillies, they won't be really interesting until, what, 25 games in before you realize who they are? The NFL knows how to promote their league. They just know how to get it done. Um, I want to start it out. Jake Elliott, four-year extension by the Eagles. It has a value of $24 million. Um, It's been a lot of work here for Howie Roseman, the general manager of the Eagles. And let me give you my spin on the Gardner-Johnson sign. How many people like it? Thank you, Spin. How many people like the Gardner-Johnson sign? Hey, hey, Hollywood Hogan? Absolutely, man. Okay, absolutely. I love it. Me. Me. I think it's kind of funny listening to the Philly media all backtracking now when they called him a bad teammate and said that this guy here has got character issues. I think it's funny watching those guys talk about him now. Um, We never said that about him. And all the people now walking those comments back is funny. For me, Gardner Johnson coming back to Philadelphia. I love the move. I know we're not going to wake up tomorrow morning because we know who the player is. They actually gave him more money. And I'm going to tell you something else here in a couple of minutes about Howie Roseman. Look, the one thing that you could say about Gardner Johnson, is he a proper run fit slot corner? No. Is he a guy who gets lost in coverage sometimes? Yes. But the one thing he is, and right off the top, he's a ball hawk. He's always around the ball. He's a playmaker. And he's a lot like Stefan Diggs on the offensive side up in Buffalo, but he's also like the kid Diggs in Dallas. See, personally, Diggs can get beat. He gets beat in Dallas a lot but he's a playmaker. There's certain guys that don't play with great technique, but are just playmakers. Okay. I mean, it's just certain guys who like, like when you look at Devonte Smith play, he's a technician. Gardner Johnson's not a technician. Okay. He's, he's a big play guy and I'm going to invest in that. I want to invest on defense in big play guys. I love the move. I loved the player two years ago when he was an Eagle. Now, you know, the way it ended, the comments he made towards Eagle fans, shit, Darius Slate called you guys toxic and he's still on the team. Don't let that stuff get in the way of a good player being on your roster. Who cares? Go make plays, guy. In my opinion, Philadelphia Eagle fans will forgive that. Who's the third base guy that got caught doing something stupid um, at the stadium and Philadelphia fans let him have it and he had to apologize and you guys forgave him? Just go out and play. That shit doesn't matter. Okay, 
Ray, Mike Williams got released. Boy, the Chargers got some pretty tough decisions to make before 4 o'clock Eastern time. <laughs> I mean, Joey Boza, Mike Williams, they just made a big move there. Keenan Allen, so they went with Keenan Allen. Chargers has some pretty, pretty big decisions to make. CJ cleared the air. We're good. Fantastic, Chris. I agree. Hey, man, words can be erased. Actions are the things that you really have a problem with with a guy. So if he's talking some shit, he's a shit talker. Who can't look at that? I mean, it's all good. At the end of the day, he was probably hurt that the Eagles didn't make more of a effort to bring him back. That's all good. People get emotional when it comes to stuff like that. Okay? Seals, would you trade Sweat for Derwin James in a, in a Philadelphia second? Derwin James? Come on. Hey, you ain't letting that guy go if you're the Chargers. You are not letting that guy go. Okay? That guy's like a Cam Chancellor, dude. No way. That's right, Chris. I agree. So, again, how I look at Gardner Johnson... And I love the fact that Howie and Gardner Johnson buried the hatchet. Everyone in the locker room buried the hatchet. And you know what? They're moving forward. Good. That's a sign of leadership. I'll tell you one thing is definite. The Giants got better. Washington's getting better. The Eagles are getting better. And the Dallas Cowboys, they're just sitting there. I don't know what the Cowboys are doing or thinking. You have one playmaker on your team. You're not good enough right now. That team is not good enough. Even with the deficiencies the Eagles have on defense, the Cowboys are not good enough. Good Lord. If CeeDee Lamb goes down, you have nothing. Okay? That's my problem too, Ray, when you guys keep bringing up Devin White. he You know what the problem that Todd Bowles had with him and why there was a constant bitching match with Devin White is because they had to motivate the player all the time. It became exhausting. Devin White is a non-motivated player internally. He has to be motivated. Like, if, here, Ray, here's the thing about Devin White. If things are going great and you're winning a lot of games, you want him in your starting lineup, and he is just a he is a demon out there. If things suck, this guy's not a guy you want in a foxhole with. Like, that losing streak last year, White would have looked pathetic in Kelly Green. He'd have looked pathetic. So that's something you got to look at with him. He plays up and down. He's not really a motivated guy. Now, I'm not going to tell you who told me that inside the uh, Buccaneer organization. You know, I'm very close to those guys. He just doesn't play up to his uh, potential all the time. Sap's right. That's the narrative on him. That's why he hasn't been signed. Dude, when he that Super Bowl year, he was blitzing. He was all over the field. He stood out. Last couple of years, and this guy's only 26. And he's now gone past day three. Okay, you know what teams are looking at? Do I have a better option? So it's not the player's skill set with Devin White. Okay, it's not it's not the player's skill set. It's his attitude that you have to be concerned with. $20 million? Do you know this guy was going to be on pace to make $20 million? And because the Bucs got tired of his shit and put a lesser drafted guy in his position who they got more production out of, and they got actually better, his value has dropped immensely. So... I agree with you guys. He is a talent. 
But is he self-motivated enough? I don't know. I might want a lesser guy who at least is going to go out there and put, look, would I rather have, who's a better player, TJ Edwards or Devin White? Devin White, hands down. Who's going to play 17 games, whether it's good or bad, you're in a losing streak or you're in a winning streak? TJ Edwards is. You feel me? You're going to get more consistency from that kid than you are white. That's a problem for me. So, I mean, he's a great skilled kid. He's a great skilled ball player. That's the best move that they have made so far that I like a lot is the Gardner Johnson move. That kind of makes that Huff move look better. Okay? So you got it. You're, you're addressing edge. You're addressing the safety position. Okay? These are good players. Again, the problem we have with Huff, again, is the run defense. Look, you can't have Hassan Reddick and him in the same huddle. You can't. You just can't. Because teams will take advantage of that. I know we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about Josh here in a minute. So for the Gardner Johnson deal, I like it. And I'm gonna tell you something else it does. Let me get to the topics here. It's not really a topic, it's more of a comment. Um there has been, in my opinion, and maybe if you guys agree with me on this. There's been a self-evaluation by the Eagle front office in ways. And you tell me if you see the same thing I do. Yeah, that's right, Barb. Thank you. It, it does start the new year, 4 o'clock. The official National Football League 2024 season officially starts. Um. There's been a course change here. Are the Eagles admitting mistakes? Look, when you admit a mistake and then try to write the mistake, I love this. They made a mistake on not ever valuing the running back. Now, look, whatever I think of Saquon Barkley and the resources of the money where I think it should be appropriated versus a running back, I'm not talking about that. They're obviously valuing the running back position. Okay, right? They feel they've made a mistake. So they addressed it and corrected it. That's a course change. Bringing back Gardner Johnson. Is this admitting a mistake? That they made a year ago by not re-signing him? And then bringing them back for more money. Is this admitting a mistake? I I think it is. And I think it's a great thing. Hey, you know, we didn't really value the position. So we're going to pay $10 million or roughly around their $10 million for a safety. What? We're going to pay $12 million for a running back. What? I think that's fabulous. I think that is definitely something that has changed. Jason, I'm, I don't know if it's about humility. I think it's more about, you know, we, we need to change our value here a little bit on this running back. I think it's course change, not humility. Hey, Flexen, where's the line? I get that. I get that. I get that. Where's the linebackers? Hey, Steve, it is a good deal. It, 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 it is a good deal. Okay, it's a good deal. Think they trade for a linebacker? Maybe. Okay, so again, I think, listen, this is not even addressing players. This is addressing course change. Gail says how he put his ego to the side sales. Right on, Gail. Yes. 
how he went like this. This kid talked a lot of shit. We talk shit. We 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 bled stuff out to the medium. So what? Let's bring him back. He's a good player. It's a fair deal. Let's bring him back. Great, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay, I mean, I like. Hey, hey, Joe. I I want people to stop suggesting that Kellen Moore is this ace OC. He's not. We'll see what he does. They didn't win shit in Dallas. It's not about putting numbers up. It's about putting critical wins up. That's the problem that you have when you talk about offensive coordinators. There's offensive coordinators, like Jimmy Johnson said on this show, that want to put big numbers up and big scores up. And then there's coordinators that want to win Super Bowls. Who are you? He hasn't done any of that. So don't go there with that. He's not this superstar OC. There's very few of those guys, and most of them are head coaches. He's not, and don't overhype him. Let's see what he does with all this skill set. Okay? Let's see what he does. Dak's a choker. Not Kellen Moore's fault. Uh, Okay, wait a minute. Dak sucks, but Brian Johnson, he sucked, not Jalen. Is that correct? Is that how you look at that? So in Dallas, it's Dak's fault. But in Philly, it's Brian Johnson's fault. Got it. Okay? Got it. I'm not saying he's a bad OC. I'm not saying he's a bad OC, but hey, Kyle Shanahan, a little bit overhyped and overrated. Guy, you got to win the thing, man. I mean, I know, hey, just because you get to the bar exam, you got to pass it. Hey, I took the bar twice. Great. Did you pass it? No. Well, shit. You're still not a lawyer. Okay. You're still not a lawyer. Okay. You get on the internet five days a week screaming at the computer. How much the Eagle, uh, where did I say the Eagle suck today? Where have I said anything in the first 18 minutes of the program of that? You're hearing what you want to hear, which is standard. You take 2% of what I say and you spin it into some bullshit. That's not true. The Gardner Johnson deal is absolutely fabulous. And what I'm saying to you about the Eagles is a good thing, jerk. They're making a course change in how they're looking at the safety position and the running back position. That is how you win championships. Not staying pat. Always having a course change. Always maneuvering and adjusting to the environment around you. That's how you win. You know, it's called adjusting. It's not calling it rethinking. It's pivoting. It's good. The teams that pivot and don't stay in their old way. Those are the teams that are going to win. The teams like Bill Belichick who stay in their old system in their old way will be passed by by the league. Okay? Seals, if you're not praising them like our shit local media, it's hate. I get it, man. People look at it like that. But I, I, as you know, Greg, I I look at things on a day-to-day basis, and I don't sit here coming in here with some hot take um, trying to stir the masses up. I give you my opinion and my heart on something here, and I'm telling you that your general manager has really done a great job here in doing the most important thing that he could possibly do. His player selections, I'm not debating that right now because I have the last two days. What I am saying to you is, is that they're taking swings. 
They're paying running backs. And now they're paying safeties. Great. Great. Dallas sits back and look, you know what the Cowboys are doing? How many people believe this? So if the Cowboys don't win this year, like Des Bryant says, every Cowboy fan and media person is going to blame Dak Prescott for the inability of the Cowboys to have retooled the team. It's almost like you're setting the guy up for failure. Okay? It's almost like you're setting the guy up for failure. You don't have a running back worth of shit. You don't have another wide out. You have one guy who you think's the best receiver in the league. I'll take both the Eagle wide outs before I would take CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb is not better than Devontae Smith. He is not. Devontae Smith as the number one receiver in Dallas, he'd be a 15, 1600 yard guy. Shit, Devontae Smith being a number one guy in Cincinnati would be that. He, dude, he is a number one guy accepting the second role because he's a professional. Like when, 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 you're looking for an executive to come out of the business, the Wharton School of Business, and you want somebody to groom to be the next CEO? That's the guy you're looking at. He's a ready-made professional. Very few of those guys come into the league like that. Proper schooling, upbringing, mentality, drive, success, um, um, has a attention to detail. Devontae Smith is every single thing I just said. Everything I said. He's just a, he's a legitimate one accepting the role of two. Get this, for the betterment of the team. Hey, T. Higgins is requesting a trade. If I'm Devontae Smith, or if you, hey, if Devontae Smith, let me ask you this before we move on. If Devontae Smith had A.J. Brown's mentality, would he have requested a trade? Would Devontae Smith in this time, would he have requested a trade? Okay? If he had Brown's mentality, you know he would have. You know he would have. We're going to find out, too, by the way. We're going to find out um, who's going to suffer in touches. We'll see how that whole dynamic works. To be fair, Sills, defending Kellen Moore when I said I didn't like the decision, we cannot determine the hire on February. Just being realistic. Q, all I'll say is this. That, that's a fair comment by you in March. All I'm saying is, is that I'm going on his history. And who he is. You're talking about the upcoming 2024 season. That's a fair comment. But what's his resume say? What's he won? Nothing. I mean, I wouldn't pump this guy up as being Don Coriel or an Ernie Zampezi or Bill Walsh or an Andy Reid, even a Matt LaFleur. I wouldn't throw him in that room. Surely not a Sean McVay. Okay? Offense is going to go through Barkley? Well, then why are you paying $50 million to your quarterback? There is not an offense that a $50 million or $48 million quarterback that the team runs through someone else other than that guy. And if you're running it through someone else, you got the wrong quarterback. No, no, no. I didn't like him. You defended him when I bashed him. No, no. I, it's an upgrade from what you got, Q. I, I mean, I think we're talking almost about the same thing. Okay? I think we're 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 kind of sitting on the same thing, Q. Maybe, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're saying. If Kellen Moore gets us to the Super Bowl, the Eagles will have a coaching decision to make. That's right, Anthony. Because if you move off of him, 
that'll be the fourth coordinator that Hertz will have in five years. That's right. You've already had Nick, Steichen, Johnson. Now you got more. And Jalen Hurts is three years starting. Going into his fourth year, he'll have four offensive coordinators. And if he plays this year and Kellen Moore does well, he'll have four coordinators or he'll have five coordinators in four years. That will be a decision, but that'll be a good decision because quite frankly, the Eagles aren't loyal to their coach anyway. They never have been under the Jeffrey Lurie era. They're not loyal to their coaches. They'll fire a Super Bowl coach or a guy that's got you to three straight playoffs. It doesn't matter to them. Whatever is in the best interest of the Philadelphia Eagles. And if that means Kellen Moore is the new head football coach, you would want that. You would, that to me is what they want this thing to look like. They want Kellen Moore to be the head coach. You know why? He would be a play calling head coach. That's what every team in the NFL today covets. They don't want the business manager guy anymore. Those guys are dying breeds. Okay? You're either going to be a defensive-minded guy who's going to be in control of his defense, or you're going to be a play-calling offensive head coach that has the clipboard in his hand and the main headset talking to the quarterback because it's a fail-safe from you losing your OC every year. That's what the Eagles want. Nick Sirianni is not what they want. He's a stopgap. Get, get, let me tell you who Nick Sirianni is. And I and I, I was talking with somebody about this last night. Nick Sirianni is a stopgap to see who the next head coach is. Because once they find that play calling OC, they're going to name him head coach. Like if, if Jalen Hurts throws for 4,400 yards and 35 touchdowns, they're not letting him go. They're going to offer him the head coaching job. Why wouldn't you? I would. Because Nick brings nothing to the table. Keller Moore brings you a head coach that's a play caller. Do you understand that you won't have to change your OC for potentially the next five, six years? But if he does well and you let him walk out the room, you're back to square one again. Okay? okay but, but if Kellen fails... Nick will remain. Nick, Nick's got probably, right now, Nick is safer today than he was a year ago. Because the coordinator, this is on him. Yeah, if, if Hertz has a big year, he's finished. I agree, Flexen. All right. Now we move on to the potential dealings of Reddick and Josh Sweat. I posted this on my Twitter page at Dan Cilio Show. Josh Sweat is on the trading block, and it seems that he's been told that teams have called and that there's a likelihood that he will be dealt. When he's wishing his fans goodbye and saying goodbye to his fans and his friends, that's a tell, tell sign that they've informed the agent that there's a great possibility, so be prepared. Um, there's going to be a trade with Josh Sweat. Reddick also has been informed, and I'm going to tell you how we know this. Here's one thing that teams are now looking at with Josh Sweat. What's the one thing you think they're looking at? He's medical. Here's a 27-year-old defensive end who's got a high market value right now, who's got potentially 40-year-old knees because of that catastrophic injury he had in high school. I think the Eagles are looking at this now going, how many years left do you think he has? This guy's more like in dog years. I love Josh Sweat. Don't get it twisted. Do I want him back? Absolutely. Am I going to give him away for a bag of fiddles? and a bag of Skittles and stuff. No, I am not. I like the player a lot. Okay? How many years do you think Josh Sweat has left on those knees? 
the wear and tear of a year ago, he played almost 300 more snaps than he did the previous year. I wonder if the Eagle uh, doctors <clears throat> and their trainers are going, you know, here we are. Could be a crossroad here. Do you want to trade the player when he still gives you massive value before his contract is up next year? Told you I'll give it midweek, my buddy, Sales. Would lighten up. Got to get past the initial blow. Got to love Sales. Thank you, Marshall. Yeah, Xander was even saying, hey, man, what's going on? No, it's forming into shape. This is what I do. I'm not going to sit here and go, let's see what happens in September. Why would I? What show would I have until September? I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And when you hear people talk like that, they've never really done it that long. This is what I do. This is what I've been doing for 35 years. Okay? We react every day. That's what sports talk is. Not fantasy talk. Um, Chris, do you move him? I got to tell you, I wasn't a fan of the move last night, but talking to people and Kevin O'Neill, who was my trainer and a Dallas Cowboy trainer, Miami Dolphins trainer, and I forget someone else he was. He goes like this. I go, do teams talk? to the coaches and analytics people and a general manager about the health of a player when it comes to free agency and how long you should keep a guy. And you know what they said? Oh yeah. I go, what do you make of Josh Sweat? He had that catastrophic knee injury and he's 27 years old. He's played a couple of years. He's been in the league. How many years has Josh Sweat been in the, in the league? Um, Hey Jay, I cursed you out yesterday. Today, I love you. I'm A.J. Brown. <laughs> All right, Jay? How many years has Sweat been in the league? Six? Okay. I say he's tops a nine-year guy. I think the Eagles are looking to trade him now because they think he's running out of gas. Since 18, Kyle, would you trade him? Man, I hate giving. Thank you, Jay. I hate giving up on this guy. I like him. Would you trade him? Raiders cut Jimmy G? Yeah, they're also going to cut Hunter Renfro. Hey, you want to hear something crazy that somebody... You're, hey, you want to hear what Michael Irvin told me about the Saquon Barkley deal? Hey, Xander. Um... Michael Irvin, he, um, oh, by the way, we're going to have Jason Cole at 3.30 and Keith Byers will be with us at 5.30. The legendary Philadelphia Eagle running back will comment on the signing of Saquon Barkley. Truly one of the greatest backs that was way before his time, one of the great pass-catching running backs and one of the great running backs in Eagle history, you talk about a dual threat guy, Keith Byers, way ahead of his time. Okay, way ahead of his time. Will be with us at 5:30, our dear friend. Drew goes, who's Keith Byers? <laughs> hey, Brian Westbrook, I'm working on him, Drew. I'm working on Brian Westbrook to come on later in the week. Okay? Yes. Do you trade them? Man, what could you get for Josh Sweat? Hey, you want to hear something crazy? What if Howie Roseman gets a two and a five for him? Like the Giants had to give the Panthers a two and a five. You're telling me you value him in the same way you value Brian Burns? That's a tough putt for me to get up off of Josh Sweat. You can get a third form. 
Man, I think he's more valuable than a third. Sills, would you get Justin Fields as a backup for Hertz? Anthony. Ah, I just don't think Fields is a good player. I really like the kid's work ethic. Okay? I really like the kid's work ethic. He just is not a really good passer. And with all, I mean, you have all these skill set guys. Goddard, the two receivers, the O-line, a pass catching back, and you're going to sign a quarterback who can't throw the ball to him? I'm not in on that. Okay? Yeah, but John, he's not a good passer. He's just not. And I don't think he's dual threat because he can't pass the ball. Michael Irvin... Thank you. Hey, look at Prince. Hey, Xander, look at Prince. What was the Michael Irvin take? Michael Irvin said this. Well, somebody looked this up too just to verify. Did Hunter Renfro make $13 million or $12 million? Is, is that what he made? He goes, Sills, who would you rather have? Saquon Barkley or Hunter Renfro? And I'm like, I go, what's your point? He goes, well, you know, you're going to pay for a good player. And I go, and he can do more. I think Hunter Renfro was in line to make $12, $13 million this year. And you're like, and Michael Irvin was, it, my, Mike kind of straightened me out a little bit on it because he goes, hey, dude. Yeah, but that's not the point. He goes like this. He goes, the guy's making $12, $13 million, man. He goes, I'm not paying that for him. I'm paying that for Barkley. I was like, I don't know. So he made he made a he made a good look at that. Kyle says that Hunter Ren, get this. Look at this. Hunter Renfro. Is that right, Kyle? 13.7 million dollars. Would you rather have Kyle Hunter Renfro or would you rather have Saquon Barkley? <laughs> Britton Covey. Thank you. <laughs> Britton Covey. Oh, okay. All right. Man, trading Josh Sweat, though. Mm. Mm. Mike sent me this. Inside the Barkley numbers. I, 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 I man. I, you know what? I hate waffling and I hate riding a fence, but man, that guy is really good. He had no help last year. Do you trade him? Dude, you guys, you cannot have, you cannot have Bryce Huff and Hassan Reddick as your edge rushers. You just can't. They can't play the run. I'm with you. Hey, Bran, I'm with you, man. Josh Sweat is such a good football player. And Brian says that Howie Roseman's kryptonite is the first round. I, I'm not thinking you're not wrong here. You know, I'll say this to you one more time about Jalen Hurts here also. So let's take a look at the first rounders you have on the team. A.J. Brown's a former first rounder. Devontae Smith's a first rounder. Saquon Barkley's a first rounder. Like first and second rounders. So look at what you have in your huddle offensively do you have anybody that was a third rounder the right guard right let's take a look at that i've never seen more first and second rounders in my life in one offense aj's a former first rounder Devonte smith's a former first rounder oh wait you're right aj is a second rounder he's a second rounder Devontae is a first rounder. Is Goddard is Goddard a second or third rounder? I forget what round Goddard went. Landon is a second rounder. Malata's a seventh. 
Cam's a second. Lane's a one. Jalen is a two. And Barkley is a one. Wow. Dallas was a second. Think about this. I don't know if I've ever seen this before in an offensive huddle with all these guys. So AJ, AJ's a two. Smitty is a one. Goddard is a two. Um, Lane is a one. Cam is a two. Hertz is a two. Barkley is a one. Seven of the 11. Oh, Landon's a second. Eight of the 11 are first or second round draft choices. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Steen's a third, I thought. I, I, I mean, Steen's a third and Malata is a seventh, right? Out of the 11 starters, eight of them were drafted in the first or second round. I don't know about you, but if you don't do shit with that this year, and this is going to lead us into this, into the next question here. There's something wrong, man. Yeah, I did. Um, Jurgens is a, is a two out of Nebraska. Yep. Okay. So let's look at this who is a difference maker. That's who you keep. Who I look at it differently, Brand. Who does more? Josh does more than Reddick. Um, he does more. I don't know what round Devontae Parker was. Uh, the kid from the Patriots that just came down. Okay, we need to take Kelsey's comments. I'm going to get to those. Here's Barkley's contract, just to take a look at it some more. 2024, the cap hits 3.9 million. It's only 2% of the cap this respected year, which means this. It's not. Barkley and Hertz's contract have no real damage to the cap at all this year and most likely next year. Looks to me, if you're looking at his contract, what what what, what did they say? That it's a four-year contract? It's really not. It's a two-year contract. Um, Seals, are you shocked Kansas City gave Chris the money? No. Um, think about what they did. Des, they gave Chris Jones the money, but they wouldn't give Tyree Kill. They felt they couldn't live without Chris Jones, but they felt they could live without Tyree Kill. And they've been right. And they've been right. And he was a game-changing football player last year. When he wasn't in the lineup, the Chiefs did not look the same. Yeah, I saw that too, African. Mahomes restructured his contract to free up $20 million in space. I don't know. They're probably not done in free agency or that's for the draft. Okay. So this is really a two-year deal with Barkley. In 25, Barkley's base goes to 11. Um, all of it guaranteed. And if you're looking at the 13, the 24 and 25, Cap hits, it's 13-5 in total. Again, it's really well done by Howie. This is his this is his forte. I'll tell you something. Let's do this. Let me finish it up here. If the Eagles were to cut him prior to the 26th season, you want to hear something even more that he put into the contract, which makes it even more insane? Is that it'd be an eight million dollar cap hit, but you'd have seven million in cap space saved if you cut him before 26 say he shits the bed he's hurt all the time and that right there is how you construct a contract you want a way out you see the thing with Dak the Cowboys have no way out of that 60 million dollar deal except what 
extension or new deal. <laughs> I mean, they have no way out of that cowboy deal with Dak Prescott. They have no way out of it. How he gave himself a, a back door here, so to speak, on the Barkley deal. It's damn good. Here, here, here's what I'll say about Howie. See, when, when you read this stuff and you see what he has done here, this is the shit that keeps his job for him. This is shit. This stuff's spectacular. This stuff's spectacular. Now, you know, I had a conversation. With, who's What is more important to you? General managers that know how to restructure contracts or a guy who can find guys in the draft in today's NFL with the money that's being thrown around? What's more of a value? What's Howie and every general manager? Would you rather have a general manager that, oh, like, look at Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones does a poor job at his cap and overestimating his talent. They do a nice job of drafting, but that's not good enough anymore. The guys who restructure these deals, free up money, find space. Those are the guys that are, see, this is what I talk about. Yeah, Hollywood goes draft expert. Well, if that's the case, Hollywood, you've been to two Super Bowls in six years with the formula that they have because they know how to manipulate the cap. He may not be the greatest college drafter on defense, but the one thing that he does do to save his job, he writes a mistake by moving money around. I mean, the Barkley deal, the Hertz deal, that's good stuff. And you know how critical I am of the guy. I, we're, we're talking something different here. We're not talking about his ability not to draft corners or linebackers. That is hammered home but i don't think it's given enough love here look at the space he finds to be able to construct mistakes and cover mistakes with money that he stays under his cap with okay i mean that's a beautiful deal constructed it's not a four-year deal in theory because after the second year, what they'll do, they'll restructure the contract, lower the base, give him more of a bag of money. If Barkley goes for 13, 1400 yards the first two years in Philly, and he does what people are saying he's going to do, they're not going to let him walk into that third year with that contract. They'll restructure it, lower the base, more money up front, lower the cap hits. And this is what he does exceptionally well. This is what he does exceptionally well. I don't see anyone with the ability to do what Howie does with cap and contracts. It's crazy. Devin? No, because Mickey Loomis gets hammered in New Orleans, right? John Schneider's kind of, you know who, you know, hey, Devin, Les Snead and Kevin Demoff in Los Angeles do a pretty nice job at restructuring contracts and, and 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 such. Jason Light with the Bucks does a nice job. Okay, he he does a nice job as well. And 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 I don't know if Lynch does a good job because they're not paying the quarterback. Then he says that Howie's a mathematician. He just needs to assign someone who can evaluate the draft talent. Hey, hey Denny that's been my take. That's been my take. So I'm hearing the Eagles are going to trade for a corner or a linebacker. So do you think they're using Josh Sweat as part of trade bait? And let's throw a name out. Patrick Sertan to Denver. You send uh, Josh Sweat to, um, I'll tell you what, Josh Sweat to Carolina because they lost Brian Burns. They got draft equity too. Do you trade Josh Sweat to Carolina for draft picks? 
They need draft picks, Carolina. Okay? David Tepper is absolutely out of his mind on how he runs his team. It's got to be the worst run organization next to the Giants in football. It's got to be. Josh Sweat in a second rounder for Sertain. That's not going to cut it. It'd be Josh Sweat in a one for Sertain. Okay? That's what it, Josh Sweat in a one for Patrick Sertain, that gets it done. A, a sweat in a second, they're not going to budge on that. Dude, you're, you're not valuing Patrick Sertain enough. Okay? Devin White from Tampa. We, we kind of broached that a little bit. All right. With what Howie has done, okay, with what Howie has done so far, and with the pending draft, do you guys think right now the Eagles are a play? The, the Eagles are a Super Bowl contender. You think you're a Super Bowl contender? Brian says not yet. No. Still got work to do. Super Bowl champs 24. It's too early to tell. Absolutely not. You got a tremendous offense. Okay. 31st ranked defense again. I say wild card team right now. Offense, yes. Defense, not yet. One more thing. One more time. I love the Gardner Johnson sign. There's that will not change at all because I like the player when he was here. And that's the first sign that I really like. And, and, and the contract extension for Landon. Okay? And the contract extension to Landon, I think, is great. Eight and nine. Devin White is not him. We can't we'll all admit the D.C. calling was ass. Seals, who do the Eagles get at linebacker? We're going to look at that here in a minute. I've got some of the top free agents that are left, and I'm going to give you my take and spin on those guys at the top of the hour here. Elliott extension is underrated. He's a really good special teams guy. Green Bay is going to be a problem. Green Bay is always a problem, though. They're a good run organization. Okay. It depends on coaching sales. Let me ask you this, though. Don't you think with all the new coordinators and all the new how – many, how many starters do you think you're going to have that are new? And you think that's going to be a seamless transition? Let's see. You're going to have a new sa- – you're going to have probably two new safeties. Two new starting linebackers? A new starting edge. You might have two starting edges. Right? You got a new starting wide receiver at number WR3. You got a new starting running back. And you got two coordinators, two new OC and DC. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of your 22 starting football players are going to be new positions by new faces. And you're going to have new coordinators. How long do you think that takes to gel? Okay. How long do you think that takes to gel? It's a lot of new faces. That's right, Barb. It ain't going to be seamless. It wasn't a year ago. Now, the coordinators aren't experienced as these guys are. Hollywood goes half a season. Wow. 
So it's going to be a bumpy ride with all that talent for half the season, six weeks. Hollywood throwing Dream Team out. Chris says the Barkley move puts you in the playoffs. The Gardner Johnson move, in my opinion, puts you more in the playoffs than the Barkley move. The Barkley, dude, do you see us trading Sweat or Reddick or both? I think both. And 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 I, I would I would put this in here, the Gardner Johnson sign is going to have more impact on the win total than what Barkley will. Barkley's going to be more of an impact on the offensive output because you had a high talented offensive skill set huddle last year. He's just going to be another component. My question is, how are you going to get the football to everybody on that huddle? Kellamore's never had this much talent before. I want to see how he, he's never had this much. How is he going to spread the football around? Is, are people going to get their panties in a bind? Shit, Dallas Goddard after week three was bitching about how he was being used in the offense. That was Dallas Goddard. That was Dallas Goddard. Okay. Hey, 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 Joshua, this is why the Bryce Huff deal, when you're talking about Bryce Huff and having Hassan Reddick, you can't have both those guys. They're the same dude. They're limited. They can't play the run. Reddick's a little better. And Nolan Smith is not ready yet. Hell with it. Nolan Smith and Huff as our DE starters, you're in trouble. Bryce Huff and Nolan Smith playing on first and second down, you'll never be in third down because they're going to run the ball right at those guys. Seals A.J. Brown to Denver for Sertain. No, 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 not yet. I'm moving A.J. next year, not this year. Okay? Seals, who's stopping the offense? themselves like they did a year ago who stopped them last year who stopped your offense last year you turnovers okay i mean we, you won't be bad again. Okay. I trust Vic with the young guy, Sills. Young guy, old guy. We'll see. I, 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 by the way, no shade on Vic. Tremendous reputation. Okay, but he's not Steve Spagnola. He's not. Okay. You see the Cowboys tried to make a play? No, the 49ers tried to make a play for Steve Spagnola. They they asked the Kansas City Chiefs if there was a way that they could make a move to hire Steve Spagnola as their DC. Kansas City shut that shit down and gave him more money and signed him to a new contract. Steve Spagnola's not going anywhere unless it's a head coaching job. And I wonder why would you leave now? You're in the process of going to the Hall of Fame has arguably one of the greatest defensive coordinators of all time. You got four Super Bowl wins, one with the Giants, three in Kansas City. Why would you leave? You're making $5 million a year. I mean, as a coordinator, why would you go? And you got Mahomes. As long as Mahomes and Andy Reid are in Kansas City, if I'm Steve Spagno, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You think Clint Hurt gets Huff and Smith to play better? I don't know if it's anything to do with playing better if you don't have the skill set to stop the run. Stopping the run, that's an innate thing that you either are good at it or you're not. Dude, stopping the run, I was a really good run stopper. Every defense I played on, we were number one or number two in whatever league I was in. And when I was in college football at the University of Miami, we were the number one defense in the nation. 
against the run. I mean, it, it's it's a different skill set. You got to be physical as hell, man. When you when you're when you're a run like that, Gang Green defense was so physical at every level, linebacker, D line, the secondary. Shit, the safeties were some of the most feared people in the league. Huff is vanilla ice of the NFL. One trick for one year. I sure hope not. Okay? Okay? Yeah. Stop in the run, man. You guys have not been great at it. You were early in the year last year. I thought you were really good at it. Like the Ravens, man. Ravens are always great and physical because they got big. I'll tell you what, the Bucks are good at it because of Via Veda in there. I'd like those big physical, like, I'll tell you this, man. He's a first and second down defensive tackle, right? Nose guard, slant, nose, whatever. If you can get Jordan Carter to play like him, then you got and you landed on something, but he's not him. That Buccaneer DT is fabulous at stopping the run. What was that guy's name? No, who was that guy that played in Baltimore? That was really a great run stopper. I would like like a Vince Wolfark in New England, dude. If you're not a great pass rusher and you're not getting home, you better be a lights out fire hydrant where they're not getting past you. That's it, Nada. He was freaking awesome at playing the run. Big old giant um, Samoan guy, huge guns, 550 bencher, moved his feet. He was a force in the middle, man. Man, what and, – and, and to get into Tampa, I, that's when you know you're good against a run. And that's where the Eagles need they, – they, in my three years now going on to four years covering the – Eagles, you guys have been sus. You guys have been kind of good doing it. Goose was great at it. Tony Saragusa was really good at it. Um, Wolf worked better. Man, the two Samoans, man, one in Tampa and in Baltimore, were awful good at stopping the run. Sap, not as Sap is more complete. And that's what you're hoping that Jalen Carter looks like. You're looking, you're looking at Sap and Jalen Carter, and you're looking at Jordan Davis to be somebody like a Vince, a Via Veda, like that. Okay. Perry was good too. Um, Fridge Perry, the problem that you had with him, he couldn't play a lot of downs because he was always out of shape. Like, he was like a six-play guy. Then it started tapering off, and Buddy would have to pull him. That's why he never really got. If you looked at, like, uh, Fridge Perry's career, the best he played was in Chicago because Buddy knew how to use him. Buddy would play him for six, seven, eight plays, then pull him. Put him in for six, seven, eight, pull him. Because the fresher he was, the better he was. The more plays he played, the worse he got. That's kind of what you're getting with Carter right now. Okay? That's why I actually think he may be a swing defensive tackle and you start Williams, but they're not going to do that because they're paying him and they drafted him in the first round versus the Gilbert Brown was fantastic against the run. My, uh, Michael Perry in Cleveland was good. The best guy of all time, though, that I ever saw pass rushing and playing the run was Michael Carter with the Niners. Michael Carter was the best I've ever seen at nose. The best. Uh, silver medalist in the Olympics. Three-time Super Bowl champion. All-American. Shit, man. He, he was one of the reasons why I wanted to go to SMU. Fabulous football player. A dear friend of mine. And his daughter won the gold medal in Rio. Uh, Dean had a couple good years. Jim Burt was good. Miami Hurricane guy. All right. There are some free agents out there still that are of note that could help this team, okay? I'm going to hit on these guys. We're also going to take a look around on the calendar to what's coming up for the Eagles coming up and the NFL. Ton of news. 
I love the fact also that Gardner Johnson apologized to the Eagle fans. It's a good first step. It's a good first step. There's so much news. Justin Fields to the Eagles as a backup. All right. Jason Cole, bottom of the hour. Keith Byers, legendary Eagle running back, will join us at 530 Eastern. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker, Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Sills National Football Show. Tad Prescott, who's he? Is that like a Mahomes brother kind of thing? You know, when you have a conversation in private with your family and you know that your family has eagle problems because the brother's famous and rich, you have to know that you're an appendage to them. You have to know that anything you say is going to be perceived as something Dak said to him. So no matter if Dak never brought it up or not, it's going to be perceived that Dak told him that. And I'm paraphrasing. Well, hey, the Eagles had the best front office in the NFL or the NFC East, whatever it was. How about them Cowboys? That's something right there in a nutshell that I look at Tad and I go, Dak. Dak in so many words told him that. Look how the Eagles are making. You know what Dak probably said to him? The Eagles are always looking to get better. You know, again, this is the one thing you're looking at this offseason. Whether you like the moves or you don't like the moves, 
This is where I'm going to agree with our friend Bill. Whether you like him or not, they're constantly trying to get better. Where the Cowboys aren't. They're, they're constantly trying to get better. And, and they're always pushing chips in. Okay? And the Cowboys sit back and they overvalue who they are as a franchise. And their ego gets in the way with thinking that they're bigger than the league when they haven't done nothing in 35 years. It's got to resonate one day to Jerry Jones. Maybe it doesn't. You know, Jerry could probably go like this. Hey, I've won three Super Bowls. Now it's just about making sure the brand continues to grow and it continues to be the most famous franchise in the world and the richest franchise in the world. Bought the team for $150 million. It's worth $10 billion today. I mean... You talk about a guy who pushes chips in. Jerry Jones will leave the Cowboys with this. Three Super Bowl championships and a probably, when he dies, a $15 billion franchise that he bought for 10 times less the price or 10 times less the value. Did he win? Absolutely. I mean, Cowboy linebacker, Van Der Esch as a flyer with a little guarantee, but incentive pay if can stay healthy, akin to Devontae Parker deal with something like $1 million in guarantee. Did they sign him? Did the Eagles sign him? Or are you suggesting that? Sure. Plus you weaken up the Cowboys. Sure. That's not a horrible move, James. He's a quality player. Health has always been an issue for him. That's that's it, Drew. His his issues are are health, with without a doubt. But again, the the, the comment, okay, the comment by by Dad Prescott, dude, shut up. You hurt your brother, man. One thing I'll give him credit for, though, Dak. You know, one thing that he does different than Tony Romo or any of the other Cowboy players, like Des Bryant and them guys. Do you know what he does do? He keeps Jerry Jones at arm's length, doesn't he? Because he knows he's going to have to negotiate a contract with him. It's pretty smart. Like, he's not Jerry's boy. Tony Rome was like his lost son. That Prescott is, you know, he's like, no, nah, we're going to be over here. I like it the way he handles Jerry. You know why? He gets what he wants and he never takes a hometown discount. He never does. That's not Jerry's boy. Tony Romo is. I like how he handles it. But, dude, shut the hell up. But Des, Des Bryant is right. Philly's getting better. Washington's getting better. The Giants even got better. And Dallas stands pat. Okay? Dude, you got to get there someday. You know what I'm saying? You got to get there. All right. Jason Cole at the bottom of this hour, NFL Insider, I want to get his take on the Barkley sign. I like what James Franklin said. Now, do I think that this had anything to do with um, the signing of Saquon Barkley? I think it's pretty interesting what Franklin said the other day. James Franklin, the head coach of the Penn State, said that how he called him the other day pretty good how he called James Franklin about Saquon Barkley and he's been out of Penn State for six years it's pretty dope that's going back and talking what kind of guy is he this and that and the first thing he said to James Franklin was I always really love the fact of the Penn State relationship that you have with your fan base with our fan base it always connects and crosses over that a lot of Philly fans love Penn State football. Okay? I, I mean, not really hitting on the fact of James Franklin as a coach, but it's true. That fan base has always been connected all the way back to Paterno. Okay? Always been back to that, to that fan base. Penn State, Ohio State, sounds right. 
Okay, Notre Dame, a little bit. Big Seals, a few weeks ago, you asked if Laurie Spence, I tried explaining hands down yes from Ricky Waters, John Runyon, to Romanowski, Nandi Asamoa, and trading for T.O. Oh, they're spending money, and they've spent money on different places that they've never spent. Okay? Oh, he... They spent money in places I thought they, okay, that that I thought they'd never spend. All right, before we get Jason on and flexing, I agree with you. Franklin can't win a big game to save his life. He's the Kyle Shanahan of college football. All right, these are free agents that are still on the board. Damn, the gay kid got signed by New Orleans. Did I see that right? That William Gay Jr., the Kansas City linebacker, did he go to New Orleans? Shit. I was hoping they'd make a run at him. He was 26 years old. Got a couple super got a couple Super Bowls. Damn, I really wanted him in Philly. Five million? Man. Mm. Mm. I really liked him. Okay. For only five million a year. Damn, I like him. All right. How many people would sign Tyron Smith to play right guard at 10 million bucks? Like a Jason Peters. God, he's good. This guy's going to Canton. Would you be interested if you're Howie? Malata, Landon, Cam, Tyron Smith, and Lane, and Goddard, Smith, AJ, Hertz. I mean, you're one move away right now from completing an all-star team, and that's the right guard position. I mean... He's 33. This guy can still remember something about old linemen. That's not old. Old linemen usually are in their prime from 28 to 36. They're still calling Jason Peters to play, and he's 42. I mean, Trent Williams was traded from the Washington Commanders to the Niners, and he got a raise at 34. 35 to 25 million dollars. Dave goes, Hertz can't read defenses. Does it matter when you got that kind of talent? Turn throw, turn handoff, turn throw. I mean, I don't know. Do you bait him to come back? I I, I I'm gonna get to Jason Kelsey here in a minute. Okay. Paying $10 million for an OT when you need defense is crazy. You're right. Let's move on then to defense. Chase Young, 24, Washington, edge, about $13 bucks. Would you sign him? Had a hell of a playoff run. Looked like he was getting better. Okay. Has a history early in his career with those injuries, just you know, it's not really injury history. He had one injury that precluded him for a season and a half. Okay? See, that's not injury prone. He's only been in the league four years or three years. It's, that's not injury prone. That's an injury that's happened, though, that you have to take into account. So what if CJ's toxic? So is the Philly media. And fan base, and like the toxic relationships, we end up back together. JH, yeah. I like the player in your huddle. Okay. Absolutely. No problem with that. Okay. I do. Would you guys be open? 
Would you guys be open to Chase Young? You know, one thing, again, I want to make clear today. The fact they're spending money in positions that they've never spent, Gardner Johnson and running back, they totally had a come-to-Jesus conversation. They completely had a conversation with that. They had to. And I think that's self-evaluation. That's good. Gaze off the list. That's shitty. I hate that. How about Julian? How about Julian Backman from the Indianapolis Colts? Safety. He's 25. Pretty good football player. I'm surprised he's still around, actually. I think that's somebody in circle. And I think you kind of wait and see. Maybe that's more around the draft or after the draft. Okay? Blackman can play, man. He's a good football player. Now we get to Devin White. And I said it earlier. I'll say it again. Here's the problem with Devin White. Sap's not wrong. And nor are the people like Rick Stroud from the Tampa Tribune, St. Pete Times, Hall of Fame voter. He and I never see eye to eye, but we kind of do here. Jason Light, Bruce Arians. Here is the comment about Devin White, and I said it earlier. Devin White is a – and I'm going to use TJ Edwards as an example here. Okay. Is Devin White a more superior talent than TJ? By far. You saw him in the Super Bowl and during the playoff time, sideline to sideline. He's a phenomenal blitzer. But you have one problem with him. He's a high and low guy. And what I mean by a high and low guy is that when shit's going great, he's your guy. When shit's going sideways, he ain't your guy. He kind of mails it in. And you need to have a guy in the room that knows how to weather through turbulence. And he ain't your dude. That's why they benched him. That's why they had an ass with him. He's not a self-motivating guy. So that's a problem. You get out of the gate with all these new faces you got, with all these new coordinators, and you guys are telling me earlier in the show it's going to take you around what? Eight weeks? To bring all this together, that thing gets bumpy and you have him. He's not your dude in the boat you want rowing with you. He's a really good football player. Don't, don't, don't get it twisted. He's a good player. But TJ Edwards is more reliable than what Devin White is. Now, if your football team is a 13-win game or a 13-win team, Devin White is an all-pro. It's a gamble. Are you willing to take that gamble when you need linebackers and you struggle at that position? Warren Sapp said the same thing I'm saying right now. So it's not just me. He's a high-low guy. I hate those guys. They're not like a steady guy. You know, there's they're, they're like Devontae Smith's a steady guy. Okay. You need linebackers, not bipolar guys. You know what I'm saying? You can't have that. And am I going to spend 10 million bucks on a guy that if shit hits the fan, he ain't there for me, and I got to bench him? I don't want to be in that room, man. And Steve goes, Sills, AJ's a high-low guy. He is, but... I'll do one of those guys on my team, not three of them, because then I got too much noise. You know what I mean? Dude, I'm all good with A.J. Brown being that kind of guy, as long as it's one of those that I have to deal with. I got 10 of those guys. I got a problem. That's a problem for me. Okay. About Jordan Fuller, safety, Rams. 
We're going to get Jason Cole, Yahoo Sports, bottom of the hour, Hall of Fame voter. I want his national take on the Barkley sign. Jordan Fuller, Rams. Raheem did a great job last year with a bunch of dudes on that team. That Rams defense got better and better and better towards the end of Slay makes a lot of noise too. He does. That shit's harmless. It's stupid stuff. Okay. It's kind of, you know, it's just noise. It's it's not detrimental. Except when you hear him saying shit like, hey, I played great. Everyone else sucked. That sucks. See, but and, and you do have some dudes on the team that do do that shit. Yeah, Isaiah Sam Simons would be great in Fangio's defense. He was a safety in college. NFL moved him the linebacker. He's a good football player, man. But isn't he 31? Right? I'd like to know what it is. I don't think I have his name here. Okay? The kid, yeah, Cameron's, Cameron wants to play in Philly too, by the way. He does. The safety from the University of Miami. Calvin Ridley wouldn't be somebody that, of interest, I don't think, because he's going to command a lot of money. I'm pretty shocked. He's 26, Simons. Totally put him on the list. Yeah. I would take that. How we let Patrick Queen and Brian Burns walk to other teams. And what sucks is Brian Burns could have been had for a two and a five, Philly. He could have been had for a two and a five. Do you think Isaiah Rogers would be our slot cornerback? You know, I keep forgetting about Isaiah Rogers. That's right. Isaiah Rogers, Gardner Johnson, Ricks, and Slay and Bradbury. Does, does Bradbury have a bounce back? You know, it's funny. Bradbury plays well every other year. And you know what, Lewis? I think that the kid... Isaiah Rogers, when I saw him, was he was he in Jacksonville or Atlanta? Where did I see him play last? I forget where I saw him play. He was a good player. Right? It, it was wait, Jacksonville, Atlanta, or Indianapolis? Colts. Okay. Colts, okay. Rodgers can, yeah, dude. He could, yeah, he could pick him up and put him down. He's a good football player, Indy. And I put here Cameron Curl, twenty-five, Washington safety. I got it safeties. I got one. I got. I had two linebackers until I found out that William Gay Jr. went to New Orleans. That sucks, man, because I wanted him, and. In a system. Ray goes Ringo. And we'll see. He's still young. Hey, Jerome Baker, he's also a highly regarded linebacker that's still out there. Okay. Look at look at LJ. Still talking sense today. Well, again, you got my take, LJ, on where I thought the money should have been spent with Barkley. And when you look at the numbers, when it comes to his cap, again, what Howie does spectacular is how he manipulates the cap. I'm wondering nowadays, general managers, is it more important, and we'll ask Jason this, is it more important for a general manager today to be able to move the money around to create cap space to keep adding to your football team Versus saying, let me land on a first-round pick. Sure, you'd love to have both. But most, organiza both, most organizations don't have that. Like, Ozzie Newsom would never be confused with a capologist. He had a guy in the building. Bruce Allen was a capologist guy. He wasn't a talent evaluator. That's why when he went to Washington... 
they never really brought great talent in. Unless it, they had Mike Shanahan in the building. Okay? And, and, and here's, here, look, Barkley, a luxury signing? Dude, I think you just got to be more balanced in how you're rebuilding your football team. Your defensive side of the team, Gardner Johnson, in my opinion, is going to make more of an impact and wins than what Barkley will. You got to stop people. He's a ball hawk. He's not the greatest technician. He's still around the ball. He gets turned around and plays. He still makes INTs. He really is like the guy Diggs. In Dallas, you know, he he's he's going to get beat. But for every time he gets beat, he's going to make a play. And he's also going to make those corners better now. Right. I mean, before I bring Jason Cole in here, I want to do this because. And before I ask him about the Barkley signing to the Eagles here. I mean, this is where Howie Roseman's value is. $3.9 million, It's only 2% of the cap this year in 2024 on a $12 million contract, which means it's mostly a two-year deal, not a four. Because here, you, you go on to 25, Barkley's base is 11, right? Well, you, over the next two years, have a 13-5 hit to the cap. And they're not gonna, and if you cut him before 26, it's an eight million dollar cap hit, but he saves seven. You understand what it, what he what he's done here? He's protected himself on the back door in case the player's injury prone. And he's got a way out of the contract. Whereas in Dallas, they don't have a way out of that DAC deal. You're either extending or restructuring. You you're you're kind of in a pickle with that deal, or you move on. How he's given himself, and, and this is the value. My question before I bring Jason on is this. Is it more important to have guys that know how to move money around versus dealing with people that know how to save pick first-round draft choices? Let's bring Jason Cole, our Hall of Fame voter, in here. We'll ask him about the Barkley deal in a minute. But, Jace, I mean, when, when, when you look at the Hurts deal and you look at the Barkley deal, and you look at the way Howie Roseman knows how to move money around. Is it more important in today's analytics and in today's NFL because the cap has got so much money and there's so much money now being thrown around to players that it's more important to have a guy that understands that versus a guy, and I'm not talking about missing completely in the draft. I'm talking about maybe that's not your forte, but you have to be able to move the money around. What's more important? Um. <sighs> I think it was more important actually years ago um, when the money was tight. When the money was tighter, um, now you can afford you can afford to make some mistakes. Now um, you can cover up your expensive mistakes the way that the cap is growing because the numbers are so large. And what helps is like sixty percent of your roster is playing on league minimums. Uh, you know, there's 30, 35 guys on every roster who plan on rookie deals or you know veteran minimum deals. So really, you you add those guys all together, it's about fifteen million bucks, and so that used to be a lot when the cap was, you know, one hundred and sixty, one hundred and seventy million. Now that you're getting closer to two hundred and fifty million dollars, or you know, in this range, you, it it doesn't. That's why the old argument about having a quarter, trying to win with a quarterback while he's on a rookie deal, that mattered five years ago it doesn't matter as much anymore because the 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 low-end contracts have not gone up um have not stayed have not stayed current with the growth of the cap which is a union problem and and let's not get down that line uh, because it's too complicated but you can still put together your roster for rel relatively cheap and you can make some mistakes now it helps. Don't get me wrong. What what how he's doing is wise, and when you're smart enough to identify a quarterback 
early and pay him earlier and tie him up and, and tie him up with with numbers that that work you can then tie up a you know the top the best running back who's on the market this year you went and got him on a pretty reasonable deal and even then because running backs are so easy to replace he doesn't have enough leverage to really command a huge top dollar deal like i was listening to somebody this morning talk about the old adrian peterson deal the i think it was eight years 60 million dollars if you did that relative to where the cap is now that would be a 180 million dollar deal <laughs> you're okay? 200 million right yeah it would be a ridiculously large deal compared to where the cap is now and the value of that contract it would just be enormous right as it as it should be for a guy like adrian peterson and i'm not saying that barkley is adrian peterson but he was the best running back on the class and he got a three-year deal for a max out of 37 million dollars that's barely half of what adrian peterson got years ago we're talking about peanuts for running backs now we're just we're we're talking about paying those guys nothing relative to the cap so maybe i'm just looking how at helps that number too much sure. jace maybe i'm just looking at that number and going 13 million dollars for a running back that they've never paid for and like you said yeah sills it's inflation and the cap's 255 all every when you look at all the numbers look xavier mckinney and Green Bay just got eighteen million dollars. I mean, I I think I've got to adjust myself because yeah, these do, numbers are at, at every position going up. Right. It's just it, guys make more money now because there's more money to be had, yeah. and again, it covers it. Like, and everybody again, everybody looks at sticker shock and goes, "How could that guy make six million? How can I come? The money's there. It's it's just it just exists. And I'm not saying that you don't want to have smart cap people. Don't get me wrong. And the NFL does a great job of training guys to be great at the cap, okay? Which galls me why the Cowboys aren't better at the cap, okay? But it, but the fact of the matter is, like, they know they do their due diligence. These guys don't overspend. They keep a tight control on on the account, account amount of money that they're spending on guys. And Philly is one of the best at making sure that they keep their cap in the proper perspective. At the same time, you could have paid you could have paid um, Barkley forty five million dollars over three years. It still it wouldn't make that much difference. Okay, what do you think of the Barkley signing um, of the Eagles bringing him in? Look, you have to always address what's happening to your team going forward. So let's remember two things. Jason Kelsey has retired, and uh, so has Fletcher Cox. So two of your stalwart, most physical guys um, have left. If you want to continue to be a physical football team, you got to have physical guys, right? DeAndre Swift, while it was a nice running back, wasn't the most physical runner in the world, right? Correct. And that was the criticism. I mean, that's not what he does. Okay, he doesn't power over people. Saquon's better at that. And if you don't have Jason Kelsey, and you know this as a lineman, how does the tush push look now? How does the brotherly shove work? Oh, I, I think it's stuff? gone. I don't know if it's completely I think they'll gone. attempt it, but I don't think it's going to have the same success rate. Uh, right, because you don't have Kelsey there to who who's an amazing at getting leverage on that play, right? Like he and I know that Hertz is a strong runner. Don't get me wrong. He's 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 also built to do that. But if you have a center who ever gets pushed back, that play doesn't work, right? It worked partly because Kelsey was able to get such great push right there and work it. So now if you're not going to work that play, now you have to have a runner who's more physical who can get that yard for you on a regular basis. So you have to change the way you play. Saquon helps you adapt to the fact that you've lost Kelsey and you're going to go to a different talent there. And you have to get tougher yards from the running back and not just from the quarterback. And the other thing is, I think he's. A I, I didn't think pitcher. of it that way. You're, you're right. Yeah, and and the other thing is, Saquon can catch the ball, and I think that Jalen needs to have a guy. 
I think he has to have the same guy on first down that he's throwing to on third down. I think he needs to have that a consistent guy. And it doesn't, I'm not talking about every single play. I think he needs to learn that skill set though, too, Jason. He, absolutely he does. Okay. And not every not every quarterback likes throwing to running backs. They don't. Hey, look, I want I covered Dan Marino. He hated throwing swing he passes. He hated it. Now he did it and he was good at it, but he hated it. He wanted to attack. He wanted to throw the ball downfield. He wanted to throw it into seams. He wanted to challenge, you know, safeties and corners. He wanted to go after people downfield. And it's like, oh, well, you know, frick, I got to throw this ball. You know, like that's how he was. And I think Jalen's a little bit the same. Jalen wants to attack people. Now, he, I'm not saying exact same mentality as Dan Marino, but when I watch him play, he's looking downfield. What do I have downfield? And you can do that, but like sometimes you got to realize you can't keep waiting for it and stop running around trying to create it. Just give it to this other guy. Go flick, go flick it to that other guy and let him take the ball for eight or 10 or 12 yards, whatever it happens to be. You know, go take the easy yards. So I, I looked at the move like this with Barkley. Okay. I mean, there's so many needs on defense. I mean, it's, I don't, and I'll talk about the Gardner Johnson thing here in a second, but. You know, I mean, for me, there were way other priorities. This is kind of more of a luxury um, sign, and it does make you better, obviously. But, Jace, when you look at Barkley's career, I mean, I could uh, – Josh Jacobs was more successful on a not a very good Raider team. Uh, Henry was spectacular in Tennessee on a crappy asshole line. And here's Barkley. Was he just a product of the environment in New York with all the coaching changes – with all the lack of talent in the O-line, the quarterback play, it's not horrible. Almost 50 touchdowns, total total offense, and 7,000 yards over six years. It, 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 would those numbers be better if he was just around better talent? Yeah, I think so. I mean, look, you play I mean, most you, of You don't court. believe he's lived up to that number two draft choice. Uh, no, he hasn't, lived, he, he hasn't lived up to it, but – but you know, it's you are a product. You're a product of of the team you played with, right? The environment around. I mean, you. If you go back and you look at OJ Simpson's first few years in the NFL, they weren't real good. I'm not 600 yards, 700 yards, nothing right. really. All of a sudden, you get about. a good offensive line. You get Joe Ferguson. You get yep. some receivers. You get some guys. You get McKenzie, who, Delano right. Lore. Yeah, like like a guy can take off and start to play. It's the rare guy. The rarer that guys. If they don't have some talent around them, right? Like they're going to be miserable. They're going to be awful. I mean, Jim Plunkett playing in New England, right? Terrible. Yeah, he was awful. Even even and San Francisco. Awful. Archie Manning playing his career in New Orleans. I mean, you know, and those are the old time guys. We can bring up a bunch of of new guys who were, you know, like amazing players, right? Who they didn't they weren't able to perform. And you and I both know why. Like they had no help. They had nothing. They had nothing around them. They didn't produce. They didn't produce titles. They didn't produce stats because there was nothing there. Like defense are like, well, look, we're just going to take you away. You're, you're not doing anything in this game. So, I, I just, I look. I, there's a certain point where you just look at a guy and you say, look at him play, and you say, watch the tape, and you say, if I take that guy and I put him around better people, is he going to perform better? Is he going to do? Is he going to do more things? And the answer is yes. I mean, you put him next to AJ Brown, you know, Devontae Smith. You got the the tight end, got it. And, and yeah, they got to replace Kelsey. But okay, they'll find a center. He's they not got cancer, as good as, right? Like they'll 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 solve that, you know. And yes, they've got needs on on defense, and they got to replace Fletcher Cox now. But they've got ways to do that, and so. You, you know, your team's always in transition. Go get good players. Saquon Barkley is a good player. Is he a great player? I think we're going to find out. How about this? Is it more pressure or less pressure now on Hertz when you have – check it out. Jace, I don't know if you've ever seen this or I've ever seen this. You l l Listen listen to the high-quality picks. A.J. Brown, a second-rounder. Uh, Landon Dickerson, second-rounder. Cam Jurgen, center, second-rounder. Lane Johnson. First rounder, um, Devontae Smith, 
first rounder. Dallas Goddard, second rounder, tight end. Quarterback, second rounder. Running back, second pick in the draft. You think there's more or less pressure when you're talking about Jalen Hurts now to show that he could take that group and that group of all-stars now, not just to the playoffs, but also cross the finish line now and win a Super Bowl. I don't know if there's more. I mean, look, there's a ton of pressure on him before, right? I, I, look, go perform. If you fail and you don't deliver right, a if Super you fail, Bowl, you're getting, if you if you don't if you don't win, or or if there's not a really good excuse for you to not win, right? Then yeah, people are going to rip you, but they're going to rip you anyways, right? Like, okay, <laughs> they're going to kid on you anyways. I just believe is what I believe is if you have a, a franchise quarterback, always make sure you give him weapons. Give him guys who are going to make the job easier. Well, right. he's okay. got them now. Right. Peyton Manning. You know, they they had, you know, they drafted him. They already had Marvin Harris. What they do, they went and got Reggie Wayne and Edward James. Right. And then found Dallas Clark and, you know, came up with an offensive scheme. Right. Like, make sure that kid has weapons. Tom Brady. By by contrast, at the end in New England, like they didn't go get weapons, and it's like he didn't win. It's big, you know Brady looks old; he looks terrible. He's like this. Oh, well, let's go put him. Let's go put him in Tampa, where you've got Godwin, Evans, and you know a couple of tight ends. Get him Gronkowski and get him some other guys. Right? He can still win a Super Bowl. He can still get. He can still get you there. Make sure the quarterback has weapons. What do you make of that little tiki barber conflict that he had with with Bart? You, you know, here, Jace, I'm, here, you may disagree with me. Tiki Barber is by far one of the most hated men by all NFL players because of his attitude that he had. And when he tried to come back, not one team offered him a spot on a 90-man roster for training camp. He used to kill Barkley in New York. Before Barkley even got his New York Giants helmet, is it right? But, it, but, but if you know it? if you know that going in, why do you care what he thinks? Like, don't I, yeah. Like, I know. I look. I I know Tiki. I, I kind of like Tiki in his own way because I, I like Rondé you know, better. <laughs> no, Rondé's a nicer guy. Tiki's got a chip on his shoulder, right? Yeah, Tiki definitely has a chip on his shoulder, and you know New York got to him in certain ways. But he was success; like he had a great career. Uh, no, he was arguably one of the best backs in the history of the franchise. Him, Gifford, right. and, and and he Ogden. always but but he wants to be he wants to be on that throne and just understand like I, I, I'm totally I'm totally fine with what Barkley said in return, and the whole you're dead to me like. Okay, I wouldn't expect anything less from Tiki, right? <laughs> like, of course you're gonna say, of course you're gonna say that he was dead to you from the beginning, Tiki, because <laughs> you never wanted him to be better than you. You you want everybody to remember that you're the guy, right? That's and petty. But that's Tiki. It <laughs> is, it is. It, it, it is. completely if is you Tiki know the character, so petty. Right, like if you know the character, you just kind of like look at it and go, "Seriously, come on!" You know, like, I, and I know that other people have a different reaction because they don't know the characters. I know the characters involved, <laughs> and I know how petty Tiki can be. And I, even though he's petty, I like talking to him because I think he's kind of entertaining. And you know how you know what you're getting with with Tiki. You know, you know. Can I tell you, you know who the, he is? He's an asshole but, with a smile. It, it is. <laughs> Right. I think people said that same thing about me. So what the hell, you know? That's, right? well, but, that's taken from a Stanford guy, which is normal. They'll call, they'll yeah. make you feel like a jerk, and they're well, but you that's, don't what, know that's what we do. We train, we train each other. We, we, we train. We train ourselves to do that. You know, we, like this is how we <laughs> talk to this is how we talk to UM guys. Ah, oh, that's right. Because it takes us a day to figure it out. I get it now. See, I was just called an asshole. Hey, let me move on now to the league here. Okay, explain to me. So Washington is making a lot of moves. Hell, the Giants signed Brian Burns. And the, I mean, the, the, the Eagles are signing everybody. And here are the Cowboys. I mean. Uh -huh. All <laughs> in, baby. 
All hey, in. Oh, wait a minute. All in. Now, here's All my in. question. I think Des Bryant's right. So, wait a minute. So, be ready to start crapping all over Dak when the season goes nowhere, when CD, God forbid, gets hurt, and there's nobody to throw to or hand the ball off to. You got no one to blame here. What are, what are they doing and what are they – and they're going to think about moving off of Tyron Smith. I, I'm not getting where the Cowboys are right now. That's the answer. <laughs> you know, it's it's tough when you're the Cowboys to find money. It's tough. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Even you don't believe. <laughs> it's tough when you're the most valuable franchise in the NFL. In the world. And, in the world, yeah. In the, but it's tough when you're the most valuable franchise in the world. And your owner's making billions. But he might have certain payoffs he needs to make, you know, on other issues off the field occasionally. Um, you know, but yeah, it's tough. It's 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 tough to be a pimp, you know, it's tough to be a pimp. <laughs> it really is. Is that Jay Z's line? Is that is that is that uh, it's beautiful? No, it's very appropriate too. It's very very switcherish. I'll right. just it's say tough, that. It, it's, just, it's tough to be a, it is tough to be a pimp. And that's all I got to say about the Cowboys. I just don't get it, man. I mean, you had an opportunity at signing some pretty quality guys, and you need some quality guys. Let's get to a quality guy. What's your take on Derrick Henry going to Baltimore? It's a good fit. I mean, look, power running back. I, I would have liked – I sort of like the idea when they got Aaron Jones do that a little bit, but you know, if they thought about that, I, I would have liked that a little bit better because I think it keeps spreading the field, but go one way or the other, either get a guy who's going to go attack the edges and, and, and help you there or get the best guy who's going to like just gobble power, power yards for you. Right. And just eat people alive. And Derek Henry, Derek Henry is represents exactly what the Ravens want to be right like they just they're just like we're all toughness we are all about getting in your grill we are all about pounding you into submission and that's Derek Henry right like that's Derek Henry Jason this is if I'm playing defensive tackle and I see Lamar Jackson and Derek Henry behind him usually in between plays I take my mouthpiece off I'm going to yeah. keep my mouthpiece in the entire 60 minutes of the game because I'm not going to know when I'm going to get hit. And you know, you were talking about the Eagles staying physical. Maybe yeah. this was part of the problem they had against Kansas City. They didn't think they were physical enough. Because now that you add that guy in the building there, I'll tell you what, man. You better have your chin strap on. You better have a Troy Aikman double chin strap and your mouthpiece in because they're going to work you. That is going to be he, he, interesting he, he, to watch. You, if you don't give that guy 20 carries a game. There's a problem. There's a problem. The offensive coordinator should be called into the office and go, what are we thinking? Like, what what are we thinking if we're not giving this guy 20? You know, and I know, like, he can fall apart physically and all that kind of stuff, but, like, he's just perfect for what – he's perfect for the team that they want to represent on the field. You think he's better than Adrian Peterson? No, Adrian Peterson was a better player in his prime. Yeah, Derek Henry's – Derek Henry – you think he's better, Frank? There's, there's a no. There's an entertainment factor to Derrick Henry. Yeah, what it's killing guys? <laughs> well, it, it's just what I always love is when they play three or four wide with Derrick Henry out there, and you know, like you're talking about teams that are in dive defense, right? And with with Derrick Henry as the only as a solo back, and then they run like a toss to him uh, out on one of the edges, and you know those little dudes have to. Uh, you know, like they have to run up to try and tackle. And you're like, you're going, oh, I want to see this. Like, because, you know, it's just comical. They're all like diving at his ankles, diving at his knees. Like, let me grab a leg and see if I can hold on long enough. Not one of them, not one of those guys is ever going to try. No way. And put their put their body in his chest. Not one of those guys was ever going to try and do that. And That'll I, be a problem. That was entertaining. That, 
that Adrian Peterson, Adrian Peterson was gonna run around those guys because that's what he he Derek Derek Henry like looks for those guys yeah. because he wants he wants to intimidate them and he wants everybody else to be scared. That's right. He's got field. binocular eyes. He's looking for you. Oh yeah, he he's like, okay, no. let's go. I, I, I want you you weigh you weigh one you one you weigh one eighty five you know soaking wet with your pads on. Let's have at it. Come on, man. Come on. You're gonna Come you're on. gonna need the trainer when we're done here with this. Um, <laughs> right. Help me out on this David Tepper guy. So let me get this right. You uh, trade Christian McCaffrey, uh, and you don't get a one for him. Then you uh, turn around and you trade Brian uh, Byrne, and you don't get a one for him. You get a two and a five. And you were I mean, offered two. What you were offered two ones before. And you were offered two ones last year by three teams. I think the Eagles were even in that thing. And you're like, you dealing for a two and a five, and McCaffrey gets you get no ones there. I, I I mean Dan Morgan, I love. I mean he's Kane. We're boys. I I I. I how much Rams. influence does that owner have on decision making? That's going on in personnel in Carolina. I look, he has the answer to your question is look what he's done with coaches. Revolving right? door. Revolving door. So everybody's doing everything out of panic all the time. And not taking you know, like not and not taking good deals when you're supposed to take good deals. Somebody offers you two ones for a defensive end who's five years in and you're a rebuilding team, you take it. You just take it because I got to rebuild the offensive line so I can make this all better for the young quarterback I have. I know my team's not very good. You just do it, right? Like you should you shouldn't even have to think about this, right? Like that's just bad man, that's bad management, but they're all freaking out because they don't know what to do. Right, and they don't know how to go to the owner and lay out. Here's the plan for how we're going to get better, and we need to stick to the plan. They're too intimidated by the owner. Like that's that you have to have a veteran GM with some big stones who can look at the owner and say, "I'm telling you, this is how we're going to run this, and this is how we're going to do it." If you hire me, you're signing off on my plan. See, if you don't want to hire me, don't don't see CJ. I think the good GMs do this before free agency and before the draft. They have a meeting, and then you ask for the parameters of what I can work within in the guardrails. What I don't like is the owners that you have to cross every deal across the table to and have them involved in it when they're not really football people. Now I get it's their right. toy. And I got this from Jimmy because Jimmy said, I'm not sliding deals across Jerry and telling him about Haley and some of these other guys that we were making moves for. That wasn't going to work. I asked him, how much can I spend? What did we have? And I went about my business and I wasn't going, hey, I got another deal. Hey, I got another deal. It just seems hey, today. Can, 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 I, can, I, can I stop you for a sec? I've had conversations with a bunch of guys who were, you know, like, they on their way, you know, getting ready to interview for jobs or, you know, like, you know, they know that they're a good year away from an assistant coaches and they'll say, yeah, what do you, what questions should we have? I said, there's only one real question you have for the owner. The most important question, you know, you get along, you get along, you get do this, do that. You just, you have to go and you say, how much money do I have to spend? You don't right. know, and, you, and you'll know right then how committed the, how committed is the owner to winning, right? As, you know, it's exactly what J, was Jimmy's talking about. How much money do I have to spend? I'm going to go do it. Here are the rule. Here are the rules. You let me go do my job. That's it. Yes, if I'm going to make a major trade for the number one pick, I'm going to let yep. you know what I'm going to yep. do. This yep. is yep. our direction. That's, right. But That's you different. picked me. Yeah, you picked me to run your football organization. Right. This is what I'm going to go do. I'm not going to ask for you. I'm not here to ask you for my, your permission on what I'm going to what I'm going to do next. I'm here. That, that to seems to me with carry temper. Out my vision. That seems temper, to me. Look, temper, 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 temper is temper is ruling by fear right now, and You're not gonna win. You know, and, and 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 also because it is his new toy. 
he you know he bought this thing he spent a lot of money you know he spent a couple billion dollars and he believes in his own in himself it's like jerry what did jerry want to do coming out of college when he was coming out of arkansas what did he really 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 in his heart want to do he wanted to work in football yep he wanted to buy the charger he, first well, no, no. Before that, I'm talking about when he was 22 years old. Oh, no, he wanted old. to work in the front office. Well, he, when he was 22 years old, he was like, hey, what can I do? Like, oh, these coaches. Let me look at what they're, you know, let me look. This sound, coaching sounds great. I'm going to do this. And then he found out how much money they made. And he said, oh, that ain't enough. <laughs> Literally, he told me that story as we were sitting in his car looking at the site for the stadium. That was, you know, 20 years ago. I remember sitting down with him. It was probably not quite 20. It was probably 18 years ago. And sitting out there, and he's sitting in the car, and he's, like, telling me the story. He goes, yeah, I looked at what Coach has made. And he goes, oh, that ain't, that's not enough. I, you know, I, no, nah, that's not <laughs> Hey, yeah. happy new year of the NFL. It's official now. The 2024 new NFL season starts right now. So let me ask you some one more. Oh, another question. Yippee. yippee. Okay. Yeah. Is Russell Wilson a short time fix or a long time fix in Pittsburgh? Yeah, nothing says Pittsburgh football like Russell Wilson. And his... <laughs> <Ed> Sierra. And <laughs> Sierra. Like, wait till Sierra gets a load of, of Pittsburgh. Well, wait till she gets a load of Oakland. Like, you know, <laughs> and you got to go rolling around down there in Oakland and Pittsburgh. I, yeah, South Oakland, sure South Oakland. Yeah, we're way, talking we're about South Oakland District. Pittsburgh. I don't want to take a crap on it, but I'm just saying Pittsburgh ain't Hollywood. It ain't Denver. It ain't, it ain't Seattle. Denver either. <laughs> it ain't Denver. It ain't Seattle. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a blue collar tough. tough hey, if you thought play. Giselle was at a place in Tampa, Sierra in Pittsburgh, that looks good. <laughs> I know. I know. And so. I just um, – like, I think it's good that they have competition for Pickett. Uh, and the guy is probably going to take the job from Pickett in the short term. And it's a, fr it's a free roll of the dice on a guy. So there's nothing wrong with this signing. But, you know, to me, the most important thing is Russell's state of mind. Is Russell going to get serious about – about doing his job again because i think he became bigger than the team he became bigger than the job and that's how he viewed himself and he's got to come back down and say no no i gotta be good at football again i gotta focus on what what makes me good at football and i gotta get back to that and i don't know if he can i don't know what he's gonna be but it's a roll of the dice and they're better are they better at quarterback today than they were yesterday you know, after that signing, the answer is yes. So you do it. Okay. One of the last questions. I got two more for you here. Here, I want I want to show you something here. I've always, you know, there's people that I've always admired that I when I was a young kid, I wanted to be Randy White or I wanted to be Joe Green or somebody like that. Now in my older ages, I just wish that if there's one guy I could be in NFL history, it's Kirk Cousins. This guy has made 412 million dollars Brady in his brilliant career made a total of 375 million dollars and Kirk Cousins new deal go with me Jason yeah. you whatever you think of Kirk Cousins and by the way how's Washington been since he's left I mean this guy is making almost a half a billion fell <laughs> money yeah, yeah. and he's won one playoff game Dude, Salute. I want to be him. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, you do, we should we should all be Kirk Cousins. You don't here, you here's a great put here's him in the Hall of Fame, but you know what you will put him in the Hall of Fame of? Big money bucks. <laughs> his I think what is it, the guarantee on it, the first two years of his deal are like $90 million total or something like that. Right? Something like that, yeah. Uh, the the nine running backs have already signed before Derrick Henry. Their combined total in guaranteed money was ninety million dollars. <laughs> he's getting, he's making a bunch of playoff game. Hey, 
Nice work if you can get it. Dude. That's what I told you. I you I told you, you he was I told you he was gonna make over 40. I told you he'd make over I 40. I cannot million. believe that. And you did. didn't, and when I first said that, you said no, no way. No, way. no, no he no got the 45. No way. 45. 45. And a, most of it guaranteed. Yeah. That's but that's that's what it costs for quarterbacks, man. Like it just so that's what, and, and when they're on the market, and look, there just aren't enough of them on the market. Because here's the other thing: if you're Atlanta and they're what the number six overall pick, yeah. If they want to go get one of the top three guys, what's the cost to go up to number three? Eight. Well, no, but the cost, I'm not talking about, like, I'm talking about the cost in terms of draft pick. Like, you're going to have to give up, what, two two more, the, the number six plus two more ones and probably another t another two twos or something like that to go from six to three or six to two or even six to one. You're going to have to pay this, you know, ridiculous cost to go up there to get a guy like Kirk Cousins. Now, frankly, I'm a little surprised that they didn't go the Justin Fields route but maybe they've done their homework on Justin Fields and they just don't think that he'll ever make it. But to me, Justin Fields would have been a good, like, here, Justin, let's make a trade for you. Give your, We're going to extend you out for one year. You're going to get the, you're going to get what you're supposed to get this year. Plus we'll, we'll essentially make sure that you get the 22 or $24 million that you're supposed to get in the year five of your deal. We'll work it out so that you get that maybe a little bit more. And we've got you for three years, and we can work to see if you're the guy. But they just said, "Look, we got we're at a stage where we have some good players already, like Drake London, Kyle Pitts. They've got Bijan Robinson. They think they can compete, and they're going to go for it at this point." And I will also say this: they sort of need to because the Braves have taken control of that town. Um, you know, the Hawks aren't very good. You know, Georgia football has is always the king of the state. So they're at best what probably the number three team in it, in the city of Atlanta. Because they're definitely behind Georgia football and they're also behind the Atlanta Braves. And the Atlanta Braves have star power. More they have the Atlanta Braves have more national star power. And that's a hard thing for a baseball team to say. But they have more national star power. Than the Atlanta Falcons have. And that's comparing True. baseball to football, if you think about it. Absolutely. Jason, I appreciate it, my friend. Um, this is going to be interesting over the next couple of weeks, what happens, the amount of money that's being thrown around. You were spot on with Kirk Cousins and such. I mean, I can't believe the money. I mean, look at May Mayfield even got three years, $100 million. I mean, yeah, well, that's, I mean, it's really two years, 50. Yeah, right. It's, with the money that they it, gave, it's really, it's really, which you know, God bless them. I like, I, I never, I'm like, any guys who make money, good for them. I will say this, and I'll make this prediction for you: the owners in a couple of years are going to be griping like crazy about the amount of overpayment they do because the cap is going up. Right? They're going to cap the, they're going to cap the number you can make on the quarterbacks. You watch. No, they won't do that. They won't care. But you know what they're going to do. The, the better argument is this: they're going to say we need to take a percent. We're going to take a percent. We're going to slot. We're going to slice a percentage off of you, another point or two, and because you know this is getting ridiculous on the cap. We can't even pay the guys we have. And the reason that happens is to get back to a point I made earlier: the NFLPA keeps making a mistake. The guys who are just coming into the league need to get paid more, like. Minimum salaries for guys should be should be one million dollars should start at one million dollars, and then go up from there. The two, there's there's they're they're creating a haves versus have not situation, and the owners will use that to their advantage down the line, and they will take more percentages off the total. And I know there's no listener out there who really cares to hear this, because they don't care about how much money the players make. You know, they just want to know who's on my team, and I get that. But the owners are going to—they're going to just destroy the players in the next negotiation because of how much the cap is going up and how much they're paying to guys who are just not really, in their view, in their mind or the public's mind, worth the money. Absolutely, Jason. Thank you so much, my friend. I appreciate it. We'll catch you next week.
Absolutely. Be good. Thank you, my friend, Hall of Fame voter, our good friend, Jason Cole. We appreciate it. Yahoo Sports. Hit the like button. Don't forget, Keith Byers is going to join us at 5.30 Eastern. He said some interesting things about the Barkley deal. And I hadn't thought about this. I want to expand on that. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today, and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian. In my heart, I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA. And the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Sales National Football Show. Please hit the like button. Keith Byers, the legendary Eagle, will join us at 5.30 Eastern. The Eagles, will they be one of the top five most interesting teams to watch in 2024? Who will be more interesting? Well, the Cowboys are always going to be interesting. Who else? The Eagles? Ravens? Chiefs? Chargers, Niners, Jets. Who are going? Who is going to be the most interesting? Packers. Who is going to be more interesting than that all-star team that they have in Philly on offense? You think the Texans are more interesting than the Eagles with Saquon Barkley, Jalen Hurts, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Nick Sirianni situation? 
I believe the Eagles will get a lot of primetime games next season. I do too. Denny, I do. Hey, Denny, I want to show you guys something. Drew, you bring it up. So let me get this right. How about this one, LJ? So when they play the Browns, Deshaun Watson versus Jalen Hurts, Jerry Judy, A.J. Brown, Amari Cooper, Devontae Smith, Ajaku, Goddard, Chubb, and Barkley. Jim Schwartz, D.C., Kevin Stefanski, former coach of the year. I'll tell you what, and then you look at all the talent that is going to be on the field that you're going to have in that ball game. If that thing's not a Thursday night, Sunday night game, or a Monday night game, or your season op- no, your season opener, who are they getting for the season opener? Is it the Browns? Is that the season opener in Brazil? Is is that the season opener in Brazil? The Browns and the Eagles with all that talent? (laughs) Hey, man. It's not official yet. Holy cow. Well, I can't wait for that game. I I can't wait for that thing, man. Dude, Brown, hey, dude, the booty bowl. <laughs> hey, you mean the cash register bowl? Holy shit, is that a lot of talent on the field, man? You know, I got to tell you something. I never thought about this here until Jason Cole brought this up. And, you know, I have to give him credit here when it came to the signing of Saquon Barkley. Um, Did they sign him to replace Jason Kelsey so that they can remain a physical football team because Swift wasn't a physical back? And the mentality of the team After that epic collapse, I'll wait for them to finish the season before I judge them. They won't fool me again. Fair enough, Death Row. But Death Row, how about this one? Do do you agree that there's something to that? You lose Kelsey. He's, He's one of the most physical guys the way he runs the ball, right? Okay, you lose Jason Kelsey, who's like one of your physical miss one game in his career kind of dude, mental toughness kind of thing. You want to keep that approach. Maybe you didn't feel physical at the end of the season last year. And so you hire Barkley to keep that thing on its rails. See, I heard somebody say that the Eagles are panicking. I don't, I don't, I don't think adding players, whatever you think, again, our discussion today is different than it was the first two days for numerous reasons. Now you reflect on those moves and how they got there and where they are now. And you're reflecting back on the last two days. There's clearly been self-evaluation on spending money at the running back and safety position. They ate some crow when it came to bringing back Gardner Johnson. Okay, great. That's not an ego sign. If anything, the Eagles went, eh, whatever. You know, there's a lot of shit talking. People talk a lot of shit, whatever. And they signed him. I think that's a mature sign of evaluating who you are and what you're doing. I, I, I don't think that's awful. So... You turn around and you go, did they sign Kelsey because they wanted to make sure that they didn't lose that physical edge? Yeah, there's some. 
And maybe that's why they put more of a value on signing Barkley or a big, it could have been Barkley or Henry. I think they had every intention of signing somebody to that position because the one thing they did not want, or the one thing maybe they didn't feel is that they were physical enough at the end of the season. And they kind of ran out of being fit. I thought they were too. I thought they were more finesse. Barkley is the first true three down back they've had since Shady. He's right. Now, if you want to do this, LJ, because you had a and you had LeGarrette Blunt, Barkley's both them dudes. And Shady's both them dudes. You know? You got a, tw- you, you got a 20 to 20 guy, and you got a red zone dude in LeGarrette Blunt. Okay? Barkley is a better blocker than Swift, too. You're right. He is. He, 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 he does put his eight. Hey, and I would say this to you, too, Greg. If I'm Saquon Barkley, I question whether or not I'm going to go all out last year for the Giants when the Giants weren't all in on me. So, you know, I thought Jason brought a great observation up. Hey, Sills, they lost Jason and Kelsey. Don't you think there's something to the fact that potentially that they wanted to keep their physical presence and keep their their, their identity because they felt maybe they were losing it? Okay. It's a good point here. Arthur brings up Barkley MVP candidate. Never happened. You know why? There's too many people to get the football to. McCaffrey was never going to win the MVP. He may win. Now, is he up for candidate potentially for... Um. Offensive player of the year, maybe. Depending if Hurts knows how to throw screen passes, which he hasn't. It's good. We're going to get to that here in a minute here. Okay. Um, I put this out there. And I wonder what my poll question looks like right now. I said, do you think Jason Kelsey regrets Retiring now. So let me see what that poll question looks like right now. On whether or not. With the signing of Saquon Barkley, does Jason Kelsey regret retiring? 57% have said yes. 38% no. And I always put not sure 5%. Um, You think he regrets it? Does this move him more back towards unretiring? Would the Eagles welcome it? Remember, they enticed him with a $14 million offer. Okay? They enticed him. Sills, they lost the toughness and attitude on both sides of the ball. By year's end, they got pushed around on both sides of the ball. Hence, the signing of CJ and Barkley. I, I tell you one more time, the the signing to me of CJ, it, that's my favorite move so far. Okay, that's that is my favorite move. He's not the best run filler. Okay, he gets turned around, but he's a ball hawk. He's around the ball and he makes big plays. Okay, he makes big plays. Now, does that entice Kelsey enough to come back and want to play? And does he, as LJ says, regret it? Um, Maybe you come back to him and you tell him after week eight, if they're doing well and there's an injury in the old line, hey, if you want to slide Cam over to right guard, say like Steen goes down, would Kelsey be willing to come back? Does he keep himself in shape? If I were him, I'd stay in shape. I mean, he was the all-pro center. Shit, man. Get this. Kelsey, Landon, Jason, Cam, Lane. 
Goddard, AJ, Devontae, Hertz, and Barkley. It'd be one of the greatest offensive assembled, talented huddles. Can I think of one that's been better? With the O-line and the skilled people. Here, let's say, is it like Peyton Manning's group? Harrison, Wayne, Dallas Clark, great O-line, Marshall Falk and Edger and James, and Peyton Manning. The 99 Rams, that's got to be the greatest offensive huddle in Eagle history right now. I can't think in Eagle history if you've ever had more talent in your offense than what you have right now. Let's put it out there. Whatever you think of the moves, that offensive huddle right now is probably the most talented offensive group of players the Eagles have ever assembled in the Super Bowl era. Unless you can think of something better, during the buddy years, there wasn't anything there there. How about the Andy Reid years? You did have Westbrook, and you did have T.O. on the field. Your offensive line was good, but your wide receivers were never really special. No disrespect. But when you look at the next after that, even your Super Bowl season, even the 04 and 17, you're like, 80? Did you have talent in 80? You had the running back. I don't remember if Carmichael was on that team. By the way, Mike Quick is going to be with us in the next couple of days. Love Mike Quick. He's on vacation right now. Wilbur Montgomery and Randall. Um, Montgomery was on that Randall team? I don't remember that. 2022 was stacked on offense. But, yeah, man, you got – but the running back. And Miles, Miles Sanders, even though he's a Penn State guy, and he had a great year that year. He had almost 1,300 yards rushing. Okay? She was the only team I can think of with better offensive talent was the 70 Steelers. Webster at center, Cole at guard, Brown at tackle, Cunningham at tight end, Swan and Stallworth, Harris and, and uh, Rocky and Bradshaw. Won four and six. They won four titles in six years. Okay. I mean, where the Eagles are running backs are going to be at least top 10 running back. Well, here, Drew, you got to remember something here. Now, let me finish up the Kelsey thing on coming back and him coming back or not. Would you come back for one more year? It's he, For him to bring it up, he had to have talked to his wife. Hey, you know, I can unretire. They did offer me $14 million. I think the Eagles would pay it. I think they would pay it. And why wouldn't you want him back? Father Time hasn't caught up with him yet. I, I, how about this? If you're Howie, do you call him? Hey, dude, that retirement is just a, is, is a week old. You know, we can, un, we can unfrost this and we can defrost this thing here. You know how we work. Hey, we'll thaw this baby out and you're back in the fold again. And, and Chris goes, don't bug him. He's the one bringing it up. He's the one bringing it up. The Eagles aren't bringing it up. He did. You know, because he's he's starting to get asked about, hey, 
is that disrespectful to call Jason? No, dude. No, it's a um. You're Brian. Maybe you're right. Maybe you want Jason Kelsey to call them. Hey, this is Jason. You know, would you be open to me coming back? Have him make the call since he made the call on retiring. Oh my God, Jalen. If you're Nick Sirianni, send him a keg of beer and see what he does with it. How about this? Nick Sirianni sends him a case of beer or a keg of beer. And it says on it, and it's 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 etched on it, one more year. One more year. Let's run it back. Hey, or hey, but maybe what you do is you deliver a beer truck, and the whole thing, all you got to do is put a spout on it. Right? And it says right on the side, let's run it back one more year. Or how about this? Saquon Barkley sends him a beer keg. Hey, Jason. Let's go play. Let, let, let's do one year together. I like that idea. Kegs for life. <laughs> hey, hey, Flexin, let's see if you know the reference. Kegs for life. I can't do the beer nuts. Okay? No, no beer nuts. I can't do the beer nuts. But, I'll, hey, I'll do the beer, but I can't do the beer nuts. That's a no-go. Okay? Seals deliver a giant card from thousands of Eagle fans. <laughs> Macklin, Deshaun Jackson, McCoy, Jason Avant, and Vic. And, and that's a good group, Miguel, but I don't think that's as good as this group. I don't. I don't think that's as good as this group. Because I and the old line is really good too, then with that team. Okay. <laughs> you can do that. Uh, Kelsey said Cam Jurgens is ready to take his place on his podcast today as well. <laughs> That's funny. Seals, just now in the Eagle News, Jason is saying he's regretting, I think. Okay. He's regretting? Bear. Think the dude wants to play. <laughs> look, look at it. Sills, I just want Howie to get rid of Quez and gain well. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a great call, Griffin. The 91 Bears. Thurman Thomas. Um, James Lofton. Who is the other guy? Reed. Plus Ken Hall in the old line. Jim Kelly. That's a pretty good offense. Absolutely. Hall of Fame running back. Two Hall of Fame wideouts. I forget who the tight end was. Pete Metzler? Am I right when I say that? The 91 A, the 91 Bills. Griffin, is it Pete Metzler that was the tight end on that Bills team? Right? Thought he was like, um, Kelsey's coming back. What do you think the odds are? Hey, now with the signing of Barkley. Sills, did you regret retiring? You get emotional too. Anthony, here's the difference between me and Jason Kelsey. I didn't have the choice to retire. Okay? <laughs> I was retired. You know how a greyhound horse or a greyhound dog gets thrown in the pit? Okay? When he can't run races anymore? That was my retirement place. I was one of the common okay i didn't have that choice you know when i could go hey you know i want to play i don't want to play no 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 i was retired and put out to pasture with a bullet behind my head in <laughs> career wise hey you're done okay now i did hey old yeller style hey i did retire when i 
said, I'm not doing this anymore, but I was in my fourth league and that was it. I was 34 years old or 33 years old, whatever it was. Hey, Chris goes, hey, Chris, you wouldn't be further from the truth. Chris goes, Sills, did they walk? They walked this guy's ass out the building. Hey, uh, can you get an arm guard and make sure you bring the playbook too, guy? You can't walk out of here without the playbook. Okay? Right? Hey, Sills, they walked you out the door with the security guards. That's how they do it in broadcasting now too, when you get fired. They bring the security guards, and you're locked out of everything, and they walk you out the door. That's how iHeart does you and Odyssey does you. It's a fact. They hire armed guards when they fire you to walk you out the door. And you can't go back to your desk. They mail the shit to you. I'm not kidding. I've seen so many people have that happen to them. One of the, they, they hire armed guards at iHeart. Yeah, they yep. Yeah. They got a sheriff in there and walk you out. I saw it done to all my friends. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. LJ goes, hey, the key cards start working. I'm using my key fob. I can't get what come I can't get in here. What's going on here? No, that was never that with me. Okay. Mm-mm. Dude. We're going to reset at the top of the hour. Don't forget also, Keith Byers is going to join us at 5.30 Eastern. A little more on the Cowboys. If you're the Philadelphia Eagles and you're watching the Cowboys. Now, if you're watching the Cowboys and how they're not doing anything, and you're Dak Prescott and you're watching the Eagles, whatever you think of the moves, Last two days, you guys know how I feel. Today, it's more about one thing for sure, they took swings. And here's the thing that you got to love about your team. They're trying to get here. Here's the one thing that I will agree with every one of you. Okay? I will agree to this. They're trying to get better. They're trying to get better. The Cowboys, on the other hand, you watch their moves. Who's the other guy on the other side of CD? Are you that egotistical that you're thinking you're going to draft another wide out to put on the other side of him? Is it that the Cowboys don't want to spend money because they know they got to spend money on Dak? Michael Parsons and Lamb? And they're being frugal. So they don't want to spend money. Dude, the Packers, hey. Whatever you think, the Eagles are trying to get better. The Packers are getting better. The 49ers are good. I think this is going to be one of their last years. They got to do something. You got to win it. Not win. You got to win it. And I'm talking in the NFC. The Lions are good. The Rams are getting better. The Bucks, believe it or not, are getting better. The Falcons are getting better. And the Cowboys or not. Jerry thinks this. See, here's the difference in this offseason with Jerry Jones and with Howie Roseman. And Jerry Jones is being called on the, as the GM because I know he's the owner, but we're going to put the GM hat on him and compare him to Howie. Howie did this. And tell me, LJ, you missed the first part of the program. And some of you guys did as well. This is what I said. I went, you know, they're trying to get better. And they addressed the running back position. They they spent money on a position that they've never spent money on 
before in their careers. They turn around and they spend money at the safety position. And on top of that, it's kind of an admission that they messed up two years ago by not bringing them back. But yet they were able to eat it and go like this. I don't care. We're, 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 we're bringing him back. Okay. We're bringing him back. And they did it. The Cowboys think they have enough in their roster right now to compete in the NFC. And I don't see that. Okay. Bro, I hate to agree with Sills, but we're so well, well, here. Sign some, and you know, and the guy from New Orleans is not going to cut it. Xavier Howard was just released from the Dolphins. That's not a shocker. I, I don't know who the Cowboy running back is. Are they going to draft a kid from Texas? Is that where they're going to go? That guy's not a first round pick. Shit, that guy's not a second round pick. I would say that that guy is probably more of a third round pick. Will the Cowboys overdraft him? I don't know. If you're going to draft a running back, there's not a running back in this draft that's worthy of taking in the first two rounds. I would not do that. Dallas is, it'll be a second year in a row. They screw up on their first round pick, the Cowboys, if they do that. There's not a running back in this draft, and that's why the running backs are getting big money deals. Maybe the kid from Florida State or the kid from Texas. Okay. Cody, I told everyone Mozzie Smith was not a good football player to draft in the first round. You know, Flexion goes like this F Dallas. Hey, man, Dallas, everybody has to understand you have to keep an eye on what people are doing in your own division because it starts first with drafting and signing guys to win your division. You can't do anything without winning your division. It's not about beating the 49ers or the Lions. It's about staying ahead of New York, Dallas, and Washington. You stay ahead of those teams. You're always, like, get this. You could win 11 games and not make the playoffs. You could win seven games and win your division and make the playoffs. That's what people miss out on. It's not about the number of wins you get in a year. No, that's for home field. I get it. It's about winning your division first. Hey, I'd like to know what um, the Chargers did with Joey Bozum. Did they keep him? Did they sign him? Did they cut him? I know that they ended up cutting Mike Evans or um, Mike uh, Williams. Um, they still got more decisions to make. They're they're way over the cap. You know, Keenan Allen was on that list. Khalil Mack was on that list. And also, like, Joey Boza, Khalil Mack, Keenan Allen, and Mike Williams all were the in, 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 in the bullseye where they had to make a decision on what they were going to do. Dude, I'll tell you what, if Joey Boza gets out there on the open market and I'm the, I'll tell you what, that could be something right there, Chris, that they're thinking about with Mac and Boza is that they're waiting to see what the Chargers do. Okay. Boza is headed to the Niners, possibly. Dude, they only got $350,000 um, under the cap. That ain't going to cut that. There's a, you'd have to restructure Trent Williams, Boza's new deal. Okay, I th I could see Joey Boza going to Washington or the Bears. Wait a minute, where's he from? The Dolphins, would he go down there? He went to St. Thomas Aquinas. And could he go to Cleveland? Something like that. And go back because he played at Ohio State. He, he He's from Miami. And he went to St. Thomas. Would he play in Jacksonville? Boy, I'd take Khalil Mack in a minute. Okay? I would take Khalil Mack. Cosmo says, Sills, Mike Williams as wide receiver number three. 
here was the problem. When I covered the Chargers and they signed him, he, he's got a weird issue with his foot. And he never really lived up to that billing when he came out of Clemson as the, the guy. Keenan Allen's always been the guy in San Diego and in Los Angeles for the Chargers. I never thought he really lived up to – he's a really good player, but I never thought he lived up to the billing, you know, because of that foot injury that he has. Okay? And, and Drew, I think that he's always getting hurt. I think that's got a lot to play into it, why he always gets hurt. Sills, would you go and trade for Asante Samuel Jr.? I don't know. What do you, what, trade what? Getting Joey, Bo okay, Joey Boza, and then you trade Hassan Reddick, and you keep Josh Sweat, and Boza are your ends and your two tackles. Dude, if that guy's able to land that kind of shit, you talk about addressing your defense. See, this is a pretty smart move here with how he's doing right now because this is now where teams have to – you know, he signed some guys initially here, but this is where you're going to see casualties of the cap because now I don't know when they have to report that to the front office and to Park Avenue that, hey, that kid Eric Armstead, would you sign him because he's a veteran? I think he's going to command a lot of money and a lot of a lot of football teams are going to be interested in him. So he's probably going to get around $10, $15 million. I'm thinking that's a little out of the price range. And Milton Williams fills that role well as a swing tackle. <clears throat> Nick Bose is the younger brother, and he's better. He is better. Joey's not bad. He's a good football player. But he's not exceptional against the run. And he gets nicked up a lot. Reason I say Samuel, because he's in last year of his rookie contract. Well, the asking price wouldn't be in the same conversation with Patrick Sertain. So, um, Sertain or nothing. Mm. I say move Reddick and Sweat, bring in Bozo, Chase Young. Whew. But Drew... So look at this, Drew. If you do that, you're replacing your entire edge rushers on your defensive ends. You're losing an edge rusher. You have to replace your entire linebackers. You're replacing your safeties, and you need depth. That's a lot of people that you're replacing, and you replaced your DC. Whew. Man, that's a, that's a lot of hoping that everything syncs up quickly. And that's a lot of pressure on your offense. See, remember something. The more new faces you bring on defense, the more pressure you're placing on your offense to not to have three and outs, turnovers. You can't have turnovers with it. This is why that defense got worn. You know why the defense played? Hey, when you guys were 10 and 1, you know why you fell apart? The turnovers caught up because the team was back on the field. That defense wasn't ready yet. It, it just wasn't ready. Joseph, we addressed Devin White. He um, He's a player that plays when he wants to. Sap's not wrong in that evaluation of him. And that's the thing that rubbed Todd Bowles the wrong way. When shit's going good, Devin White's a superstar. He's been a great player since he came out of LSU. But when things are going well, he 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 kind of doesn't really give max effort, if that makes sense. Okay? Sills, if the team signs Devin White and trades for Patrick Sertain, Will this be a Super Bowl contender? I say this to you, Kyle. I like this. I, I, I like that question. 
Getting Gardner Johnson, it's a great move. I think the Gardner Johnson move is actually better than the Bryce Huff move. I think he'll have more impact on your football team than Bryce Huff will this year. He'll have more impact on your defense, Gardner Johnson. More impact than Huff. Okay, now I think you got to figure out to do at linebacker. I don't think college kids are going to cut it. I think a college kid and a vet would cut it, but not just college kids. Because the guys you – see, my fear is they think that Kobe Dean and Zach Cunningham are good enough to hold the fort down and they're going to draft linebackers in the draft. That's not going to help that position because the linebackers are not good enough to hold down that position. <clears throat> the best move is coming, hopefully. Yeah, I don't think the Barkley move is the best move. I think the Gardner-Johnson move is the best move because that's the biggest need. Again, remember, running back's not a need. It needed to be addressed, but the safety position was a bigger need that needed to be addressed immediately, and they did. Okay? And they did. Smiley says, Dan is trying too hard to be nice. These Howie moves are killing his pride. I've already told you how I felt about the Bryce Huff move. I'm not going back over that. I'm talking about now where how you got here. You see, Smiley, it's more than just sitting around shitting on things. It's also talking about when something is done evaluating the player, and then how did you get there? It's not sitting here nailing and hammering on LeBron James all day for 32 years. That's not what we're doing here. I do, Joseph. I think Gardner Johnson being back there helps out Slay and Bradbury. Dan, do you like any rookie linebackers in the draft inside? I do. Percy Wilson from NC State. I like the kid from Kentucky. And I also like um, um, Edrin Cooper, who I've been talking about for two months now. Okay? I do like that. Ain't nothing about being nice. Whoever, I'm an equal opportunity offender and will always be. Sills had number one pick on his own list. I did, until you went back and evaluated it, and you looked at where he was when it came to run stopping. I didn't know he was graded that low. So that was a mistake on my part. You you gave $17 million to a backup. Okay, the move is Gardner Johnson. Gardner Johnson's a superior move to that move. And it's also the sign that Reddick is not here. I'm pretty shocked, though, about the sweat conversation. Yes. Hey, you ever you ever in your entire life look back at something and said, you know what, I forgot to add this? Okay? I just did, Arthur. I just told you I did. What a tool bag. Just admit it. Yeah, just admit N'Kobe Dean blows. Okay. <laughs> I'm awake or you. Sills, I need you to keep talking shit. Please don't fall in love with anything because again, you're the you're you're, you're the one guy I come to. If you're gonna be this nice, I'm awake or you or he's telling me this. Hey, dude, if you're gonna start being okay, if you're gonna start being Hey, yeah, hey, Arthur said that he's an elite pass rusher. Arthur's the same guy that said Rashad Penny is an elite rusher and running back last year. <laughs> I said he was dog shit. <laughs> Rashad Penny, baby. So I think sweat pose for being traded is smokescreen for Reddick being traded. Oh, so Kyle... 
you think it, it's more like kind of what happened with Slay and with Gardner Johnson. I wonder how that relationship is going to work out. Dean shouldn't be in the NFL sales. I don't know about that. We'll see. How about this one? Am I right? Do you remember what happened in that whole sequence? Remember what they were doing? Remember ESPN, Fox? Hell, even Slay put out that, hey, Philadelphia, love you. See you later. Bye. And Gardner Johnson, all of a sudden, within a matter of 24 hours, Slay had signed a brand new contract extension, and he wasn't even up for one yet. He had another year left. And CJ was the guy out. Drew Rosenhaus got to Howie and turned the tables on Gardner Johnson. And that's why Gardner Johnson had an ass on the way out. Right? That's why he had an ass on the way out. I wonder how that relationship's going to work. <laughs> Anthony, big sales. Should wear a turban. Truth teller. You hear that, Xander? About time somebody told him. That's right. If Gardner Johnson can stay on the field and keep healthy, I believe he could get nine to 10 interceptions and lead the league. Greg, I said it before and I'll say it again. I think he's a, um, yeah. So I got the defensive end from the, from Penn state, believe it or not. I got him going to, uh, the Eagles chop from the, um, from Penn state as of now. On March 13th, I think they take the kid chopped, the six foot four, 255 pound defensive end. Um, Sills, would you pay high money for a kicker? You mean like you guys did? $24 million deal? How about David Long with the uh, linebacker Miami in the fourth year? Played with uh, Vic. That's probably where you're going with that. Don't forget, Keith Byers is going to join us at 5.30 Eastern. I want to hear what he thinks about Saquon Barkley coming to the, um, to the Eagles. You know what? I want, I want, to, I want to show you something about, about a guy like Keith Byers to show you how ahead of his time he was and what a great ball player. You're talking about a guy in the late 80s and early 90s and how good a player he was and how ahead of his time. Keith Byer's stats. Um, this is what he did in his career, especially in Philadelphia. Okay, this is what he did. So he had 577 rushing yards. But he turned around, and he also had 621 Receiving yards. His second year, he had 562 yards in Philly. And then he turned around on receiving. Here, 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 here's the better numbers. His first year in Philly at 700 yards in total offense. His second year, 700 yards in total offense. His third year, 1,300 yards in total offense. This is when Bax didn't catch the ball out of the backfield. His third year, he had 1,200 catching the ball out of the backfield. 900, 900, 900, 900. Bax didn't run the ball and catch the ball out of the backfield. 700 yards rushing. How about this year? He had 900 yards rushing one year, and he had... 900 yards receiving. Would you take that from Barkley this year? How many receptions did he have? How about his receptions? This is Keith Byers. 72 receptions, 68 receptions, 81 receptions, 62, 56, 81. That's a running back. He was way ahead of his time, way ahead of his time. 
Yeah, Keith Byers played a little bit like Herschel. That's right. He was like that. Not as good, though. Okay? Isn't this the guy that said we should trade Hertz and a couple number ones for Russell Wilson? No. That's your general manager who said that. That's who had a deal on the table. I never brought up trading Hertz ever. I've never said those words. Your general manager had a four-year contract on the table for Russell Wilson who voided a deal. That's who wanted Russell Wilson. And so did everyone else. So when you say that, also throw your GM in there. He offered Russell Wilson a contract. Okay? Don't forget that. Is it just the guy that wanted Russell Wilson? Yeah, along with your GM. Hey, Yale's right. The best deal never made. Sometimes the best deals are like the ones when you don't send um, Seth Curry from Golden State to Memphis because you got a guy in the building like Jerry West going, eh, I don't think you should do that. Yeah, see, that guy forgot that part of it. Isn't this the guy? No, your GM was the guy who offered the deal. Oh, I thought your opinion was everyone thought because everyone was in on him. And by the way, I'm still not sold on Jalen Hurts in that $50 million contract. We'll see what he does this year with all of those guys. Hey, we're going to talk to Keith Byers and get his take. Power Hour's coming up. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian in my heart. I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Champions on three. One, two, three. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA. And the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online.
Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. For the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC <laughs> Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Big Sales National Football Show. Let me ask you something about Gardner Johnson letting bygones be bygones. Is it more the Eagles doing that or is it him or both? Surely both is the easy one. But man, he was very angry with Philadelphia. He was very angry. about how he was felt dealt with by Howie in the front office. And he's let bygones be bygones. I, I, I heard that he apologized to the Eagle fans. Said you guys were awful fans. He, he sensed his apology. Hey, dude, that's cool. I'm not, I'm not here to... Look, I'm not going to sit here like radio shows in the afternoon on other places and sit here and dissect how this guy's feeling, but I'm... I'm more so his actions here asking you. I mean, like, I don't know what he, this guy's feeling or not. Don't forget, Keith Byers, 530 Eastern. Um, money talks? It sure does. So money and opportunity, right? They're trying to charge us with tampering with Barkley. Hey, I'm awake, are you? Who's trying to do that? The Giants? The Giants had every opportunity for the last three years to sign the guy. And now you're talking about tampering? They're just trying to cheese a draft pick out. You had three years to sign this guy to a contract extension and a long-term deal, and you didn't. That's on the pathetic Giants. Name. That's not my point. Howie, Howie's the one giving them the contract and the money. Of course he made it right. I'm talking Gardner Johnson. Does he get credit also for going, oh, man, I got to let bygones be guy, bygones. Again, no, I got to let by. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Hey, Anthony, that that deal was not consummated the other day. That deal was consummated probably at the Combines. Okay, let's be let's be honest here about that. That deal was probably dealt with at the Combines. Okay? Um, Danny, earlier you said the Eagles spoke to James Franklin before. I saw it on a clip on the Eagle um, Twitter page. Danny, earlier you said Eagle spoke to James Franklin before today at four, which good could be in violation of tampering. I'm seeing stories all over the news now. Okay, now wait a minute. If you know that Saquon Barkley is not going to be tagged and he was falling in the tag period, and really I'm with you, Yale. I'm not afraid of this. This is this is why are the Giants now? moaning about allowing the player out of the building. I mean, hey, 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 how about this one, Barb? Do you think that how he called Nick Saban and asked him about Derrick Henry too? You think he called about Derrick Henry and, hey, what's he like? I mean, since he deals with a lot of Alabama guys. You're trying to do your due diligence as free agency starts. Don't you do your homework by calling former coaches, um, agents, players that you're interested in? You don't have to call people, but you, you can do your homework on folks, can't you? I don't think that that's out of bounds, calling one's former college coach. Or, now here's the problem, though, Barb. If how we called James Franklin – to get in touch with Barkley and say, we got a contract offer for you. There, there is a problem. Hey, but Hey, Barb, 
did James Franklin call Saquon Barkley and say, "Hey, I just talked to the Giant. I just talked to the Eagles. Don't sign anywhere. They got a, they got a great contract for you, and I think you're going to be pretty happy, you and your agent." I mean, so I don't know the rules either like that. Okay. So now it's starting to pop up that the Giants are moaning about losing it. Hey, prove it. Right, Brian, I'm with you. Prove it. Aaron Rodgers, VP. I saw that. That's great. It's typical Jets distraction. You got VP of the United States of America, Aaron Rodgers, with JFK Jr. <laughs> Good, they can all smoke weed together somewhere in a teepee. Great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they can all smoke weed in a teepee. <clears throat> Parsons on the Barkley signing, sickening. Boy, they got it going on. Hey, look at all the people belly aching. Giants are belly aching and the Cowboys are belly aching. You guys, man, this guy, how he's shaking the world up. Oh my God, Devin White's going to the Raiders. Yeah, you guys aren't addressing your linebacker position. He's happy with it. Unless there's a trade. Ridley to the Titans. Why? Why? That would fall on NFL for coming up with tampering days. I agreed. Give the Giants some of Nick's flowers to stop crying. Um, I thought Rodgers is playing football. Dude, yell? Yeah, who knows? When the smoke comes out of the TP, like we're getting a new Pope. Well, hey, that's what it's going to be, yell. Yeah. When, when the smoke comes out of the TP and he's smoking his mushrooms, and we see the white smoke, we'll know if he's going to be the VP of with JFK Jr. or he's going to be the starting quarterback of the New York Jody McDonald Jets. <laughs> That's what I say. Prove it. Giants try to pull again and free kick, free pick. That's what they're doing. Tiki Barber's dead to us. Barkley on his <laughs> I vote for Jesse Ventura. Pain. <laughs> hey, you're bleeding. I got time to bleed. <laughs> I got time to bleed. Yeah, I love it. The New York Giants, one of the most pathetic organizations, um, are now crying about Barkley and potential tampering. Nobody says anything when Frank Gore... Renig, now we tampered with the Saquon. Hey, name, don't get it, it, I, this is a nothing burger. And the Giants being typical loser Giants right now. How terrible. Gannon notify a uh, Gannon. <laughs> hey, how did how did they get Saquon's deal done so fast? Well, shit, how'd they get Derrick Henry's deal done so fast? Sills the Ravens called the Niners about a possible Debo trade. I, if that's true, that doesn't shock me. Okay? Cry me a river. Look what you're doing to the NFC East with the Howie moves. This is fantastic. They need an offensive line and a quarterback. Yeah. Hey, hey, this is funny. It is. This is absolutely funny. Let me reset here. Let me reset here on um let me reset here on on on, on doing this here and making sure that I want I want everyone to know how we opened up the show here okay I want everyone to know how we opened up the show and I think without a doubt that Howie did a nice job here with the C.J. Gardner-Johnson. I think he did a great job at bringing him back. And when you look at what they did, now look, again, this is not a pivot me telling you that the Barkley deal I'm a fan of. 
And I agree with what LJ said. This is more of a luxury sign than anything else. We've all, we, we've gone, right guys? We've gone two days back and forth, all of us, on debating this. I got people on my Twitter page going, now the guy's saying that Howie's a good GM. Well, here's where I am with Howie being a good GM right now and what he's doing. I'm not a fan of that priority. I thought running back was a fourth priority. Okay? I did. The Huff signing, if you re-look at it, somebody's gone. The Gardner-Johnson sign, fantastic. Great. Here's what has happened, though, that has made me say this about Howie when it comes to dealing with the money. You see, people see a clip that James puts out there without watching the context of the show, and they make their own narratives at it, that this guy one day is doing this and this guy. No, I'm not. We've debated. We've debated the picks. How did you get here? And there's two things you're looking at. Well, they addressed running back, something they don't do. You've had two different Pro Bowl running backs the last two years at no money. This year, you signed a guy with big investment. Second pick overall. You know, and see, Senor will go like this. That's a flip-flop? How he flip-flopped? Did he not, folks? Has how he flip-flopped? And how he deals with the running back position. Has he flip-flopped like Senor says I did? Did he flip-flop? He never addressed it. It's never been a high priority. They've never paid for it. And all of a sudden, here we are. How he flip-flopped too. So, if that's the case, Senor, so did your general manager. So, how he flip-flopped so Dan can. I only talk about what your GM does or what your players do. See, my opinions are based on what your GM does, your head coach does, and the players. I'm not a fortune teller. Your general manager, in a good way, flip-flopped. He flip-flopped, can't keep drafting and trading the same position players every year. Can't keep drafting and trading the same position players every year. I never said Howie Roseman was a good talent evaluator on defense. That stands pat. This is a huge pivot by Howie Roseman. As Senor would say, it's an enormous flip-flop by your GM at the running back position. I give him kudos. I give him kudos. He's done something they've never done. Pay for a player and spend that kind of money. Ever. They've never done that. And they usually have done it by committee. Don't forget, Keith Byers will join us bottom of the hour. Smart people don't do the obvious. I love that take. Okay? I love that take. That's right. You want to be unpredictable. Especially when you're doing this stuff. However... They have been too predictable at two positions, safety, running back, linebacker, and to some extent, corner. Okay, well, they pivoted at safety. And they had to eat some crow. Both sides did, really. So where am, what, am I, what am I getting to here? I'm telling you that that organization had some type of self-evaluation in conversation in the building where they said, we have to change our ways a little bit here. 
Every good football team that was in the Super Bowl or in the conference title games had a talented running back, right? McCaffrey helped lead their team to the Super Bowl. There's a reason. You got a high-quality guy. Hey, by the way, Pacheco's going to make a ton of money. If Saquon Barkley's getting $13 million, when Pacheco's deal's up, what do you think he makes? I mean, what do you think he makes? I mean, 15 million, 16 million? Just because they got him in the sixth round, that guy's going to make a ton of money. A ton of money. Um, and, 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 and they pivoted. This is why today, when you look at what they're doing and the bringing back of Gardner Johnson, there's still a lot of work to do on the team. Is it a Super Bowl contending team yet? No. Is it a Super Bowl offense? Yes. Is it a Super Bowl team? No. And the big question will come down now, do you have Super Bowl coaches? Do you have coaches in that building that can deliver a Super Bowl? Okay. Brian says, I'm getting there. Yeah. Okay. Sills, do you think this roster is legit? No. I think your offensive roster is exceptional. I think your defensive roster, there's still decisions to be made. What are you doing with Sweat? Are you trading Reddick? Your linebackers are awful. Your corner depth, you know, I know you guys think that some of the guys that you drafted the last two years are going to fill in just nice. Well, I'm not there yet. I haven't seen it. I think Reed Blankenship's a dude. Uh, if he's a starter for you, you better have a really great safety next to him. And they brought in Gardner Johnson. And one more, one more time about his skill set. Gardner Johnson is not a great safety. But what he is? He is a great playmaker. He's a playmaker. Like, he gets turned around a lot. He's not a very good run fit guy. But I'll tell you what he does. And I told you this earlier in hour one. Like Jimmy said, hey, you know, some guys don't play great technique. Some guys are not the best out there sometimes, and they look awful on tape. But you know one thing Gardner Johnson is? He's around the football. And he makes turnover plays. And he's always, you know, even when he got in the game with the Lions, he had a turnover, an interception. I think he only played like three games for them. I think he had two picks. And he, he he's always around the ball, which to me, it, it, that's those are guys you want on your second. And th th the Eagles missed him. Massively. I think that entire secondary missed them. Now, the defense is just totally a mystery still to me. You know, they're, I, I mean, how are they going to be against the run? They were terrible last year. Safety ain't what it used to be. These dudes don't have to be big hitters anymore. Just have to be quick twitch guys. I think they got to be playmaker guys, like what you see with Gardner Johnson. You're right. They don't have to be the John Lynch's and the Jack Tatum's and the uh, Cam Chancellor type guys any longer. Be nice to have one of those dudes, like the guy in Baltimore, but you don't have to have those kind of guys any longer. You're right. And quite frankly, when they took that missing piece out of the secondary, you know, Epps too also, but when they took Gardner Johnson out of the secondary, that affected the corner play. Yeah, and – he he brings a bit of that uh, that scummy gator. Sw I mean that that swag that he has with him. I think how he brought him back and buried the hatchet, and I think the only reason he did it is because he's a gator. But hey, who am I to say? James says I'm. I look. I like your show, Dan. I'm a Kansas City fan, though. But anyways, give them hell. I, I would say this to you, James. You had a great off season so far. Fantastic. Fantastic offseason. The signing of Matt Arizza, 
the money of uh, Chris Jones, the tagging of Snead. Um, he, he restructures his contract so that he can get $20 million of cap help to Brett Veach. Fantastic. It's a, such a great run organization. You got the best coaches at their positions, and Steve Spagnola and Andy Reid as a play caller, the best quarterback in the league. You have the best front office guy in the league. You know, as much as everybody in Philadelphia likes to crow about James, about Howie, Howie's not in Brett Veach's league. Here's a guy that's won four Super Bowls or three Super Bowls. He's been to six conference championship games since he's been a general manager. And um, I know the quarterback makes a decision there, and he had nothing to do, Brett Veach, with the decision-making. That was all John Dorsey. But that goes back up to Clark Hunt, too, also, and him making the decisions on who should run the organization. John Dorsey was just too sharp for that organization. John's kind of an asshole. And if you're not used, to, if you're not used to being spoken to like that, he's not your cup of tea. And it didn't work in Cleveland. And it did well, it, it worked for a little bit. He's a tremendous college talent evaluator. And it was completely his call. It was his call to draft um Patrick Mahomes. It was completely his call. Remember, he put he Andy didn't know what he had. That's why he played him behind Alex Smith. McNabb, hey, let me ask you this. Did McNabb ever sit in Philly? Did, did McNabb ever sit in Philly? That'll just tell you. Andy didn't believe in Mahomes right away. Well, I thought he threw for 3,000 yards. His first year in Philly, didn't he throw for three grand? I thought he threw for three grand. Because if that's the case, maybe he did believe then. Pres McNabb didn't sit his first year. No way he sat. He didn't start the first few games? Okay, but let me see his numbers. Donovan McNabb stats. McNabb's first year. His, his first year starting, McNabb. I'm trying to look it up here. Um, he did sit. He did. He only had 948 yards. He started his second year. He did sit. You guys are right. He did sit. So Andy must Andy must like that style. You know where he got it from? Green Bay. He got that from Green Bay. Because that's how Green Bay handles their quarterbacks. Okay? He he must yell. Yeah, he must have got that from Green Bay and Mike Holmgren. Because they made the trade with Atlanta to get Favre. They bring him in, then they draft at 25 Rodgers later. Rodgers sat for like three years before they put him in. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I, I he was there 17 years. I mean, I, I thought Favre was still the starter in Green Bay when Andy left for Philly. He, But he must have got that mentality, sit a guy and put him there like that. All right. You know what, man? This is one of my favorite people because this guy shared a room with my guy, Jerome Brown. <laughs> hey, can you wait, wait a minute now? Keith Jackson, Keith Byers, and Jerome. Woo! Philly must have been on its ear back in the day with them dudes rolling around town. But I'm really privileged to get our friend on here, and we really look forward to hearing his take when it comes to um, the signing of Saquon Barkley. And let me tell you this about Keith. Here he is, Keith Byers here. I, I, I told hey Keith, I told people you were ahead of your time because 
you could go out and get 900 yards rushing, turn around and get 900 yards receiving. And this was before people didn't even throw the ball to running back. So you were kind of like ahead. <laughs> Can you imagine what you would be making today if you played in the NFL with your sports players? Oh, my gosh. I try not to. <laughs> you know, sometimes me and the guys, you know, from the 80s and 90s, we sit around and around the campfire and we talk about it. And we're like, wow, we was just a little too early, just a little too soon. But, you know, we, we were still appreciative that, you know, what we made while we played because we would talk to the old heads. And they're like, back in my day, I was like, wow. You know, but, you know, we were closer to them in salary than we are today with the guys in salaries. It, it is a difference. You know, uh, I still remember going on strike in 1987. You know, one of our theme was for guys that played, you know, the past, present, and future. Where the future is now. <laughs> you know, so we sacrificed, you know, I, 1987, I sacrificed a quarter of my salary, you know, for those guys. It, you know, when we went, you weren't making the same money we're making today. That's not the same. It, yes, it is. <laughs> a quarter of a salary of the, how much money you made? You, well, you lose a quarter Keith, of your salary. That, hey, Keith, you know, in a moment, in a moment, right? you know, we had a movement that, for right, Keith, And it was my rookie year. And all I remember is, is that, you know, for me back then, here's this kid making, you know, for the first time, I'm making ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a week. You know, if you prorate that out to right now, we were, that was a lot of money for me. And we missed those four games. And they promised we'd get those four games back at pay. You know, Keith, I'm still waiting for that. <laughs> You're still waiting on it. I know. I would love to have that back today. Yes. <laughs> With a little interest. <laughs> Absolutely. That Keith, would be awesome. Your take. What, what, what do you make of the Barkley sign to the Eagles? I love it. I love it. But, you know, I hated the Eagles had to play against them twice a year because when they played the Giants, you know, find Saquon. He is the key to that offense. Find him. And, you know, when you sign a guy in free agent, you know, overall, you know, any you know free agent, you look for a difference maker. Saquon is a difference maker. He, he's a difference maker. You know, he can score from anywhere on the football field. He's dangerous. You know, handing the ball you know, as a running back. You know, as a pass catcher out of the backfield, you know, worst case scenario, you can put him back there on punt return. He is a difference maker. And uh, they haven't had somebody like that in, in quite some while. You know, I'm thinking of, you know, Michael, I mean, uh, Brian Westbrook, you know, was the last guy that, you know, was dangerous out of the backfield and running the football, you know, for the Eagles. And so for them to get somebody, you know, like a Brian Westbrook, probably Brian Westbrook on steroids. Yeah, you know, you know, that good when he's healthy. How about this, Keith? For you, when you went from the Eagles to the Dolphins, what type of transition is that when you're going from one system and one place that relied on you just about the entire offensive output to where now you're going to a place that's got, I mean, all-stars at almost every single position in the skill set, guys, the quarterback, the wide receivers, the tight end, the old line's exceptional. What, what kind of transition do you go through with that as a player? Well, as a player, that's where chemistry really comes into play. You know, when you see so much talent around you, how do we mix off the field as well as on the field? Because, you know, when I left the Eagles to go to the Dolphins, you know, we were loaded. there. Keith Jackson, the tight end, Urban Fryer, and, and Mark Green, the wide receiver. O.J. McDuffie was the number one draft pick. And you got, you know, the alternate weapon, you know, behind the center, Dan Marino. You know, yes, weapons all over the, all over your offense. And so we need that chemistry. And, and and that's what we had, you know, in Miami. You know, guys were unselfish. I remember you only could throw it to guys. You know, you, you, you know, you need more than one football. But we didn't care as long as you win. And that's what the Eagles, you know, need this year. You know, get back to what got them to the Super Bowl was, you know, guys got to be unselfish. You know, this week you may get 10 balls. Next week you may get two balls. But as long as the team is winning and, and, and you're going in a positive direction, that's what it's all about. And uh, I think with Saquon Barkley, you know, coming to the Eagles, you don't have to take him off the field unless you just need a breather. But I want to see the Eagles offense take another level, another step. They took about two steps back, you know, from 2020 through 
2023 offensively. You know, uh, I'm not going to say Jalen Hurts regressed, but the offense regressed. That means everybody. You know, from the play caller, you know, on down. You know, they, they just didn't they, – they, they took two steps back, you know, last year offensively. How about this, Keith? You're adding him. You're bringing Kellen Moore in. You know, you're. You, it's a whole different dynamic. He's not really a screen pass guy. Um, it's going to be interesting to see. And as you said, will the Eagles be able to deal with maybe somebody suffering when it comes to touches? I mean – there's, there's only one football, Keith. You know, I mean, that's got to be a priority in the conversation. Do you think in the offseason? Is that established in the offseason that you have to have everybody on the same page as the September comes around? Because somebody's not going to have a big day one day. You day may be the third game. How does that work? You're right. I mean, I, I talk about that all the time you know, on my show. If you want to have a good regular season, it starts in the off season. It starts now when no one is looking. You know, you need the chemistry. You need to form those bonds. Off season workouts and OTAs, all that's important. And then when you're away from the locker room, you know, how do you guys get along? You know, socially. Do y'all ever go out to dinner? Do you ever go over each other's houses? You know, to, to form those kind of bonds. So you're, even though we're not doing a football activity, you know, that's first and foremost on our minds is winning football. How can I get better? And so you build that rapport. With your teammates, I mean, everybody don't have to be buddy buddy. Come over my house, don't go over your house. But you got to have that chemistry where when you come to work, you know it's last. It's a time and a place for everything. It's time to laugh and joke. But when we step on that field, it's all about business. When we go into our meetings, it's about business. And then it's time to unwind, let your hair down a little bit, and relax, so that everybody's on one accord. You know, come game day, because that's what that's the only thing we're going to remember at the end of the day. Did you perform on Sunday or did you not? You know, because that's how you – everyone's happy. Everyone's going to be here when we are winning, when you're doing what you're right, what you're supposed to do. Last year, the Eagles season stopped at Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving, I'm like, did the Eagles know they still have more football to play? Because you could just tell. It was just like letting the clock run out. Just like, we know, they lost two in a row. They lost three in a row. You end up losing six of your last seven. Guys, you, you quit before the, that Tampa Bay game in the playoffs. We knew the season was over with. It would just go through the formality. And you can just see it on the players' looks on their faces. You know, they had that defeated look. They didn't have the same look on their faces when they were, you know, going to the Super Bowl and, you know, had a lead in the second half of the Super Bowl. It was about, let's go get better. Last year, they just lost it. So it's still in that locker room. I still believe in them. But this offseason is crucial. That's when they got to get that love of the game back again. I, I love what you're saying, Keith. I mean – how much do you think that has a chance of carrying over? Like when you're 10 and two, 10 and one, all of a sudden you see guys, I mean, just laying down. I mean, you're getting beat by Drew Locke. You're getting beat by Tyrod Taylor. You're getting beat by bad teams. And then, as you said, the final nail in the coffin was the Buck game. The Bucs scored nine points against Carolina the week before. And you couldn't score 10 points against that Bucks team that you beat earlier in the year. And like you said, Keith, you, you, you knew they gave up. That's why this offseason here, you know, they're not real big on OTAs. They're not real big on training camp. You think it's a priority this year for them to get on the same page again and put that bad taste out of their mouth. Oh, absolutely. You know, and I mean, and, and rapport, here it is the month of March. I mean, everybody should be starting to had your vacation already. It's time, to, you know, to put in the work and, and, and get back to work about, you know, winning football. And, and 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 it's good that they went through a season like last year. You know, you had the high and then you had the low. And, but the previous year, you was at the Super Bowl. Philadelphia is a great town to win football games in. It's a horrible town to lose football games in. And so, you know, now you, you take the you know, sweet. It's a lot better than the bitter. So this all season should be rough on the Eagles. You know, they should, you know, take more arrows and spears because the, the season didn't end the way they wanted it to. And we don't love the players any less or the organization any less. We just expect more. And we know so do they. And go in there and do the hard work right now when no one is watching. And, you know, you're bringing in Saquon Barkley. Let him fit in the locker room. Get to know Saquon well before September. You know, so I want to see those guys have fun again. You know, and, you know, and ways, you know, to win football games. And that's why, you know, in Philadelphia, it's a city of brotherly love. 
everyone in that locker room ought to have that same spirit, you know, of the city. And that's just holding each other, holding your family member accountable. Yeah, I think they got away from that, you know, last year. If they, if they could, their lips could say something else, but their actions would show they, they got away from what made them special in 22, you know, and they have to know it's not just a switch that you flick on. It's something that they work on daily. I mean, and I look at Jalen Hurts from his rookie year up until the Super Bowl year, you could just see the hunger. He got better and better and better. And in 23, I still see uh, traces of him getting better, but the offense wasn't there. I mean, who, I don't know. The play calling was atrocious. You know, how do you not have hot reads? You know, they're blitzing and you don't have nobody breaking off, you know, short. And then you're blaming the quarterback. I'm like, that's everybody. It's not just the quarterback. It's the coordinator. It's everyone else's, you know, this is, you know, professional football. And you're not making side adjustments? What is going on? <laughs> you know, hey, Draymond, go be special. No, no, no. It's everyone. Everyone is, was was needs to be held accountable for that. So now it's off season. It's time to go back and reestablish your core because the off season is when you set your goals on what we're going to be like, what kind of team we're going to be. I ask every team that same question: What is our identity? You talk about it during the off season. And then during the season, you go out there and prove this is who we really are. You know, you can talk about we're a tough guy. We're going to be more hard-nosed. We're going to do that. Okay, let's talk for the offseason. Then the season comes around, go prove it. You know, when they do the Philly shove on fourth and one, everyone in, this, in the country knows it's coming, and they, they get it. Because they don't, they're not d- being denied. They need that kind of attitude on first and ten, second and medium, third and short. You know, hey, we are going to be a successful offense. And the same mentality on defense. Hey, we don't they, – they forgot how to tackle. They thought they were playing two-hand touch. You know, that was atrocious defense that we watched out of Eagles. You talk about Philadelphia Eagles defense, those are, that's a that's a standard to live up. You know, they're hard those knocking you know, knock you in the dirt. You know, defense, you play, you put on that Eagle green jersey. You know, we don't – you know, we're not a finesse defense. You know, Eagles defense is the one knock back, slobber knocker hits. We didn't see that out of them last year. That's not Eagle defense that we are accustomed to watching. And that's why I go back to what is your identity? So uh, head coach, Nick Seriano, he needs to talk talk around right now. What is our identity? Put up the film from last year. That's who we are or who we not? <laughs> you know, like my old coach Bill Parcells used to say, you are what your record says you are. So not just your record. So whatever the Eagles say, this is what our offseason is going to be about. We're going to be more hard nosed. We're going to be aggressive. We're going to be the, that's all all talk. But then when the season gets in September, go out there and establish it. You know, go out there and be it. Keith, how about this? Okay, I love what you're saying because it's the mentality you have to have. But how do you use Barkley when you you you've just given him more money than anybody's ever received in Philadelphia Eagle Kelly Green? at the position you're finally putting a priority on the position that you haven't in years. Now to justify it, you are you going to give them the ball 20 times? Is that going to be more your identity? Are you putting the RPOs back in? You've got two 1000 yard receivers. Now you just bring in a back who's arguably one of the top backs in the national football league. How do you use them? I mean, for you, Keith, what's the value for him? I know he's better in pass protection. He's a better pass catcher, but the Eagles don't throw flares and they don't throw, like you said, they don't throw screens. Are you going to implement that with Kellen Moore, the new offensive coordinator? Are you going to run the ball more? Who gets less touches? I mean, how do you use Saquon Barkley? There's only one football. Well, I, I, for me, every Sunday, if Saquon is not touching the ball 20 times, now that could be 15 carries and five catches. Yep. You know, how, how, but he needs to get the ball 20 times. You know, figure out an offense, run him a halfback option. You know, the same way Christian McCaffrey, you know, runs in San Francisco. There's plenty of offense that you can find out, you know, for uh, Saquon Barkley, other than just running him between the tackles 25, 30 times a game and not throwing him no pop. He can catch flares, he can be checked down, and he can just get some, some design play for him. If he's catching, he's touching, not say touching, touching about 20 times. How many times do we want to get the ball to AJ? You know, we want to get the ball to AJ at, at least 10 targets. If we throw the ball to AJ 10 times, you got to come back with seven. You know, 
uh, Devontae Smith, if we throw the ball to him 10 times, he ought to come back with seven. I just described 40 plays. You only got about 55 or 60 in a typical offensive uh, game in the pros. That means the tight end is going to get between three and five this week, and the other running backs are going to get about three to five carries. That's an I team with an identity, you know, that, because not that many plays in the game. So, Devontae, you got 10, 10, 10, 10 targets. I need you to bring it back seven. So, AJ, you got 10. I need you to bring back seven. And if there's going to be outliers. There's going to be some games they catch over 10 balls. But if they're getting 20 targets in a game, the Eagles are probably losing that game. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not probably winning those games. I'm describing a winning formula, you know, and, and Saquon and G, has got to be a major part of it. A year ago, because if you look at the pass numbers, get this. 36% of the targets went to AJ, and they threw to the numbers. Hertz had an 8% uh, quarterback rating, an 8 quarterback rating in the middle of the field. They had 36 pass receptions at a wide receiver three, very limited in pass catching. You're talking about the formula spreading the football out, so people are going to have to really come down in their targets and accept that to play winning foot. They didn't play winning football in the second half of the season. No, not at all. Not at all. I mean, and, and you and you don't and you can do that what I described without having to just be like, oh gosh, we haven't thrown him the ball yet. That ought to be a part of your normal offense <laughs> of getting these guys the ball, moving them around. Don't just put them out there on the islands at an X receiver and let them get doubled and say, well, we can't throw you the ball because you double. Move them. <laughs> you know, put AJ and Devontae on the same side <laughs> and, and cause matchup. You know, run some combination routes with them. You know, with our tight ends. Oh gosh, you, you let, like the same way me and Keith Jackson used to work the backside. We put Carter and Chris and Mike Quick on one side, and me and Keith Jackson are worked the other side. <laughs> you know, you can only you got to you know spread out. You got to put pressure on the defense, and you know, and with our guys, I mean, we got enough weapons in that, in that team that. I mean, offense coordinator ought to come to work every day smiling. <laughs> look what I get to work with. You know, I got Dallas Goddard. Oh, look what I get to deal with. I, I got weapons. You know, I didn't even mention the backup running backs. You know, they, there's room for them to get some touches also. You know. Let me – I got to ask that's you That's a team with an identity. How about this, Keith? I, I'm I'm very biased. So um, I'm going to – it's going to be a hard question to ask you here. You know, the retirement of Fletcher Cox, I said this about him in his 12 years. Spectacular player. Is he better than Jerome or is Jerome better than him? He carried a great tradition on. I'm too, I'm, I, I'm too biased. Obviously, the career was cut short, but Fletcher was a spectacular football player. He'll knock on potentially the Pro Football Hall of Fame door. Um, he's one of the greatest tackles in the history of the Eagles. I just don't think he had the skill set of JB, but I mean, he he's in the conversation at least. Is that fair? Yes, yes, it's fair. That's fair. You, you know, uh, it's funny because you, you talk about the Hall of Fame. I always laugh now. I've gotten this age. I don't know what a Hall of Famer is <laughs> because I used to I thought thought I knew. I'm being you know sarcastic somewhat, but. I'm glad you, like Fletcher just retired. It hasn't even been a week since he retired. And, you know, I was like, just take a deep breath. Give it about six months. And we appreciate how great a player he is and was, you know, for the Eagles. You know, because you've had some time since our great friend Jerome Brown has been gone. And it, we, we even after only seeing Jerome for five years, you know, for the Eagles, we knew how special he was then. And time has not diminished that. You know, we have – Jerome's been gone almost 30 years – 30 yeah. years, 32 yeah. years. Yep. I mean, and we still remember how great he was. So um, when we – and we'll talk about Fletcher Cox also in 10, 15, 20 years or how great a player we – you know, it's still too fresh that we kind of take, you know, great players for granted. <laughs> so when the fall, where's Fletcher? He's not there. But he would – but we, we don't need all that time to know that when you talk about defensive tackles in the Philadelphia Eagles organization, you know, there's room for two starters. He's starting along with Jerome Brown. 
<laughs> you know, I, I and I, and you're so on point with Jerome. See, I really only needed three years ago. Just like with Sean Taylor, we're very fortunate at the University of Miami to have had those players play at our place. And both those guys were on their way to Canton. And after year three, Jerome was on his way to Canton if everything played the way it was out. So mm -hmm. I didn't really know that about Fletcher early in his career. His is more like you said. And by the way, no, there's no shade on anything. I think he's spectacular. But Jerome was just – because I get asked this a lot because, like you said, Fletcher – just retired, and I get asked, do you think he's better than JB? And I'm like, man, you're really talking about somebody that was a game-changing dude that I mean, not only did you have the greatest end of all time and maybe the greatest defensive lineman, but you had a guy who was going to be one of the greatest D the greatest. of all time. I mean, that's all. And, and you're on that Eagle defense. Everybody was great at yeah. every level. So, I mean, those two guys stood out on a team of great players. I mean – you know, you know, like you say, Keith, when you're great and you stand out in a crowd, especially a crowd like that, you know you're special. Sure. I mean, you know, I, I, let, me, let me add this to you, because I shy away from GOAT conversations, the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know, I get that question a ton. And I, the reason why I shy away from it, because we end up doing comparables and when you compare, you automatically want to knock down the other guy so yeah. you can prop up the, the, you know, the guy you're talking about. And I'm like, we're talking about all great players, you know. And I said, and so, and when I get especially around, let's say I'm sitting around a campfire, say, smoking a cigar with a bunch of guys, and I just tell them in football, you know, I'm 60 years old now, believe it or not. I look good for my age, but I'm 60. In the NFL, <laughs> the NFL is only what 100 and five years old, 103 years old or whatever yeah. it is. So I've seen a lot of the NFL. And I said, in the whole NFL, I could only come up to, in my professional opinion, two go. You mentioned one, Reggie White. For me, Reggie White is the greatest defensive end to ever play the game. Lawrence Not Taylor is the greatest outside linebacker. Yep. To play the game. That also means there's defensive tackles, there's inside linebackers, and and yeah, you know, and so those are the only two positions that I could come up with and say that they're the best. There's a lot of great defensive ends that play football, a lot of great outside linebackers that have played football. But Reggie White, that's it, that's including Deacon Jones and Bruce Smith or anybody or these little young guys right now, they're not Reggie White. No. You could, could play the run, the pass, and everything else. J Lawrence Taylor is the greatest outside linebacker that ever played. Lawrence Taylor didn't play middle linebacker. I'm not talking about middle linebacker. I'm talking about outside linebacker. So then when they talk about quarterbacks, oh, it's Tom Brady. No, Tom Brady's Montana. a great player. Yes, you say Montana. I say Dan Marino. <laughs> Someone else may say Johnny Unitas. It's a ton of great players that have played the quarterback position. You know, uh, and then, and then, so I would say arguably the best quarterback because I don't I don't talk about team awards when I go to get into goat conversations. Well, how many Super Bowls did he win? Well, football's a team yeah. award. When the Super Bowls are team awards, you know. Otherwise, why didn't Terry Bradshaw? This team won four, but ain't nobody's going to say Terry Bradshaw was one of the top five quarterbacks no. or top ten quarterbacks of all time. You know, so Tom Brady won seven Super Bowls. You know, great, great. I, man, that's a heck of a accomplishment. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play. Keyword, one of the greatest, not the greatest. Because he would have had a heck of a time playing against uh, those defensive of the 80s and the 90s and the 70s. When they Keith, could, you always, know, as long as they didn't touch your face mask. It's a hey, different game. Keith, I always say this. When you talk about the GOAT conversation, if you had, if you had a two-minute drill and you had to pick a quarterback, who are you picking to win a ball game? That ain't got nothing to do with trophies. That's got everything to do with winning ball games. Who are you taking? I'm close. I'm, I got a blindfold on. I got a, three names on the wall. And I don't care if it's Marino, Elway, Montana. <laughs> I want to, well, I'm going to hit one of those names on the target. I'll be happy. Yeah, yeah. Let's go win the football hey, game. Hey, like you give said, me one of those three. Give me the third dude. <laughs> Yes, I'll, and be very happy about yeah. it. Be very, very happy hey, about finally it. Here, <laughs> finally here for you. When you watch Christian McCaffrey and how everyone 
they they glow over what he does in a game. Do you sit back with your family and do this? Shit, man. Yeah. That. That's what y'all impressed with. I did that for 12 he does. What, are they, what are they talking about here? I mean, Keith, I, you have, I, when I got you on, I went, he must sit there when he watches people going, this guy McCaffrey, he's the best. I did that 15, 20 years ago every Sunday. <laughs> and I blocked the blitz and linebacker. I had to block Lawrence Taylor That's with no right. help. So Christian McCaffrey, not, he's not blocking that outside linebacker on the blitz. No way. You're not stepping up in the A-gap, taking on the middle linebacker. <laughs> you don't have to do that. <laughs> and I still – I love Chris McCaffrey's game. But I'm like, it's a different game. You know, imagine Seth Joyner saying, I got Chris McCaffrey out of the backfield. But I think I'm blitzing to see if he can pick – you know, he's going to pick up blitz pickup. Chris McCaffrey would be like, hey, coach, can we get another back in? <laughs> I don't want to block Seth Joyner. <laughs> I don't want to block – I want to block Willie Thomas, Myron Evans. I don't want to block those guys. <laughs> so it'd be a different guy. You know, it's just different. I appreciate Christian McCaffrey's talent, but I'm like, been there, son, seen that already <laughs> with bonuses. <laughs> Absolutely. Keith, you were spectacular as always, yes. and you found time for me. Thank you. I want man. to thank you so much for doing this, my friend. All right, Dan, anytime. Got- anytime. I'm glad I could make time for you. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate it. The great Keith Byers, I really appreciate him doing this. Please hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Imagine for a moment that you went to work today and when you came home, you were catastrophically injured. Your life and your family's life. That's what happened to union construction worker Mike Little. I was scared of what the end was going to be, but to be 100% honest with you, I knew I was going to be all right just by talking with Brian. In my heart, I just knew everything was going to be all right. Call the firm and find out why they say, we got this. Call 215-458-2222. Field of life. First Trust Bank is there for you. Because Philadelphia dreams deserve a Philadelphia bank. Underdog Fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports and certainly the easiest when you're watching the NBA and the NBA playoffs are almost here and you can win money making picks. What are you waiting for? Sign up on underdogfantasy.com and use the promo code WIN. An underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. That's underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Get ready for the NBA and get ready for the NBA playoffs. Go to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code WIN. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Lombardi. I'm an inspector at DryTech. At DryTech we offer three major services. The first one being basement waterproofing. The second service we offer is foundation and structural repairs. And then the third service that we offer is mold remediation. If you feel you are having a waterproofing issue, give DryTech a call or check us out online. Do you stream on a Roku, Fire Stick, Google TV, or Apple TV? Now you can watch 6ABC 24-7 with the 6ABC Philadelphia streaming app. And the big story on Action News. Search 6ABC (laughs) Philadelphia and start streaming today. E-A-G-L-E-S. Eagles. Guys, we're awesome today. Free agency has been a lot of fun. This this is the fun time of the year. And you heard what Keith said. 
if you're going to build a championship football team, you build it today and you prove it in the fall. He's so right. That's why when you, you know, when you have certain hosts that say this, Hey, it's early in the process. You just heard what Keith said. You prove it in the fall. You build your championship team today. I want to thank everybody. The Krauses, you guys, please hit the like button. We really appreciate it. Two to six tomorrow, and we'll see you on the flip side.